Gentlemen, a freaky fast broadcasting on your Monday night. Tonight, the drivers of the ISRC Larry Art Productions Truck Series get back to more traditional racing after four weeks of short track style type of runs. We're finally going back a mile and a half of courses, and the drivers are excited to get back on track, especially with this late run that we're heading into the regular season. Just four more races to go, but tonight it's going to be a special one as the drivers get prepared for the Bobby Gill Brawl 150 at Charlotte. It's a special night for the drivers. Like I said, just a few tracks left to see who is going to be inside of our top 16 to make the playoffs. But for others, it is a night of honoring, reflecting, and as well respecting the life of Bobby Gill. Bobby is dealing with recovery currently after uh, having a seizure back in February, which enabled doctors to actually find out that uh, Bobby had brain cancer uh, in the middle of March and currently is dealing with chemotherapy. He's at home recovering, getting stronger and going through therapy to just get his body physically prepared to go on this battle. And Bobby, we are hoping for the complete best for yourself and your family as you're going through this tough time. But tonight for the drivers, like I said, Zach, it's going to be a crazy one. Uh, excited for it. My name is Sam Dyer. I've got Zach Hall with me up in the booth here to give you all the coverage of tonight's action. And Zach, after four weeks of utter chaos of these last four short track style courses, finally back to traditional. I think a lot of drivers are happy for it, but there are certainly a lot of tempers and rivalries that have grown because of these past four weeks. Ooh, it has definitely gotten a little bit spicy these last few weeks, Sam, with that uh, selection of tracks, so to say. It really changed things up with all the short tracks. So a lot of people had a lot of drama. It was a lot of uh, issues, I'd say, coming out of there. And tonight with the mile and a half of Charlotte, they're going to have their hands full now with some pack racing. So if you're mad at somebody, you're probably going to be pretty close to them tonight at some point during this 150 laps. I would agree on that as we're going to head down to track side and get a look at drivers that are going into qualifying as the timer is going to be a little bit wrong. There was slight issues popping up on the iRacing side that kind of messed up with some of the settings the drivers and admins have set up. The drivers will be simming, uh, will be advancing, I should say, this event of qualifying once they get to five minutes of qualifying. So these first five minutes, very crucial on can you put down your fastest lap as each driver is given two laps to put down their fastest time and only five minutes to do so. A minute practically off the clock already. And your fastest driver is GT Irizarry, top of the board for the 14. It's a 29.947, but Zach, there's a lot of other fast drivers we know should, we should be watching out for, especially the driver that just topped the board right now. Ali Fonseca, for sure, one of the drivers to watch out for. I look back to the last time we were here, it was the likes of him, the driver we have on screen, Nick Crawford and Trenton Jump, doing battle for a championship, even along with Christopher Norris. Those four are really strong in that race, so watch out for them tonight. But as we talked about, Ali, John Forbes going to jump up to the top after his big win last week, coming in with the points lead, too. He's a driver that you got to look out for. Yeah, John Forbes breaking the championship curse with that win last week in the first ever champion. The season after you win, you go into victory lane. And the 11's open to continue on with that high pressure. But a driver that's also been on some high pressure, been up front challenging almost every week for a win. But maybe he lost out on a win because of the late yellows that popped up. Danny Cochran in the two, hoping to be top of the board. Could have been the first lap, a 31.7. That's the fast, I mean, the slowest lap, excuse me, of any driver that's qualified so far. And this two really setting up for this second lap. That he was, Sam. Definitely was all focused to the second lap with that speed he showed on the first one. We'll see a little high there coming out of Forlis. He pushed the nose. We'll see how the line carries to, or speed carries to the line here for Danny. But it looks like it's going to be a 29. 77 so that's going to put him up to the sixth position so not bad but i talked to danny a little bit this week he felt like charlotte is not his greatest strength of a mile and a half track he feels like this is one of his weaker ones if it is 
But some other drivers shockingly finding some great speed just getting inside of the top 10. Tyler Dangler in ninth. Cedric Hunter just bounced up to seven. And all as well, the double zero of Thomas Green, winner of the inaugural Charlotte race back in season two, going to be starting in fifth, currently on the board as Matthew Greathouse to have a strong qualifying run with a minute and 15 seconds left in qualifying again qualifying did get messed up the admins will be advancing the session after five minutes have been concluded so once we hit five minutes we will advance into the warm -up period as it looks to be it has to be a quick lap for matthew greathouse who rips the top setting up for this second lap stays off the wall and getting every little bit of speed the 51 can grab as he roars down into turn number one first the start of lap two definitely using every bit of track there sam that's for sure he was uh taking a big risk but it gains you a big amount of speed and that just gains you lap time overall if you can carry more speed down that straightaway much easier to go fast on the straightaways than it is these corners here. These drivers are trying to hold these trucks wide open here on these qualifying laps, and it, it gets very hairy. The back end wants to step out, the nose wants to push, so you really never know what the handling of the, or the balance is going to be like as it looks like that time around at 29.97. We'll see if there'll be any pickup on, or sorry, that was actually the second one. So a good little bit of pickup, but still going to keep him back in 26 there, so. Trying to set up for a better run. Not going to be fast enough. Going to be about a little bit under two tenths slower than our pull time, but going to be back in 26 position. Justin Campbell, though, only able to get one lap in, and it's going to be 28 passes for the nine machine as the time crosses over into the five minute window. We now just wait for the admins to hit that advancement button. As right now, Justin Campbell not going to be able to get the time in as the advancement button has been hit as he was in the back stretch, but. Hey, the timing window just was not there for all drivers to finish up in qualifying. Instead, we head to warm-ups where the drivers will be given five minutes to get some last-minute practice, as well as figure out where they're uh, going to be starting in their stall pit stalls. But for us, it gives us time to take a look at how the season has progressed to this moment. This is race eight of 11 in the regular season. As we take a look at the point standings, Pretty solidified up front. Currently, it's John Forbes. Top of the board, 18 points over Danny Cochran. Vincent Sore has fallen down to third, but he's trying to make his march back after missing one race. But where it's the most fun, right at the cutoff line, 16th position, Joshua Freed. It only has a two-point buffer over Gregory Smith, who is also Justin Smith. Trevor uh, Everett going to be I mean, Travis Everett going to be in 18th. Tyler, uh, uh, Tyler Dengler, as well as Mark Morales. All these drivers so close, and with four races counting tonight left in the regular season, all of them still have a chance to make the top 16. That they really do, Sam. A lot of opportunity still available, and you know, I really look from that tenth position on down. I'd say guys ninth on four, they're pretty good on points. I, they're not, you know, mathematically locked in, but they're more well off than others. But I think it's gonna be pretty close from there on back. I think one thing that's gonna be critical, you see that bonus column where those are the points given out during you know leading laps such as that, but also those stage points. It's gonna be so critical for drivers around that cut line. Also, other drivers to note on 28th, 29th. That's where we find Thomas Green, Jarrett Talmage. Both showed up late into this season. They are two races behind everyone else. But if they could get inside the top 25 in points and win. They're both automatically into the playoffs, so they're just at that cut line, as we've seen Jarrett Talmadge run well at Las Vegas, which is going to be our last race of the season, and Thomas Green won this race back in Season 2, so both those drivers open for a little bit of luck and past success to carry forward as we take a look at what the schedule's been like this season. It's been a, a fun season overall. Like I said, just came off of our four-race stint of short track racing that started off at Phoenix for race five. Then we went to the Milwaukee Mile, went to Gateway, uh, as well as we have Richmond for race four. And you got to see a variety of the different winners, but a lot of those winners also kind of built up rivalries and fights with between one another. And I got to say, Zach, I think the most fun here is the fact that we've seen, you know, yes, there's two to three drivers that are the odds on favorites every time we look at win columns wise, but a variety of different winners that we've seen throughout the past couple of seasons. It definitely is a huge variety of uh, different winners that have come through. And, you know, the one thing I think it's going to be cool, too, is first mile and a half here tonight at Charlotte. We got another one to close out the regular season there at Las Vegas. Then once we get into the playoffs, you're going to have a good wealth of mile and a half. So tonight in Las Vegas, those two races could be a big telltale sign of what we can see when we do get to those playoffs where it gets down to crunch time. 
as that will be our schedule for these drivers. Less than two minutes left in warm-ups, and if you've been watching these last couple of weeks, it's time for the pickums. Who's going to be having the picks to get their driver to possibly get a win? We've gotten some success on who we think is going to get into victory lane. Uh, Zach got it the first week. Who's going to get it this week? Well, let's take a look at those pickums. We'll start off with my pick of my driver who I think has a chance to win this race has found success in the past we're gonna go with Nick Crawford the last driver to win this race back in season three and when that race was around it was a championship race where Nick Crawford got himself into victory lane crunch time it mattered clutch efforts I think Nick Crawford's got the clutch factor to get the win here and try to go for his third win this season love that pick there Sam but I'm gonna have to take it a different route here tonight I'm gonna go with the number seven of Cedric Hunter had that win get away from him here earlier in the season at that Milwaukee mile. I think he's going to come away tonight here. First mile and a half, though he, he likes these tracks, I think he'll be one to watch out for, maybe one to win. Not a bad call, especially because he's also thinking about points for the rest of the season, currently tied for 10. And we never know what we're going to find with our producer, Robert Moyer Jr.'s pick. Let's see, let's see what Robert picked for his decision and it's ethan smith the winner of this race back in season three the 99 hey i mean ethan had his first debut race back last week after being gone for a season and a half he actually showed some promising speed zach I, this isn't the worst pick in the world this 99 could shock us with a win here tonight in his second race of the season he, he very well could sam he's uh shown speed in the past at mile and a half and i mean right now second on the warm-up board once we drop this green flag, it's going to be a telltale sign to see how Ethan can do. So starting back in 15 is going to be tough, but I tell you what, he's definitely a driver that's got, you know, so to say, that dog in him to get through the field. He certainly does as we find ourselves warm up come to the conclusion. Also, right before we go to the grid, I want to say thank you to Larry Art Productions being the title sponsor, as well as Hot Lap Threads being our qualifying grid sponsor and more cats for being our stage break winner sponsor as we get ourselves prepared for tonight's race here at Charlotte. It's going to be 150 lap stage break at the end of lap 40, zero fast repairs, four sets of tires in pit road. And tonight's a special one, like I said, for the drivers, they're hoping for some great points days for others. We're hoping to have a wonderful time watching some great racing action. As the drivers are gridding up, here's your hot lap threads, qualifying grid results. Taking the pole award, give it to the 11 machine of John Forbes. Fast driver, hoping to go back to back after winning the last week at Gateway. And right beside him, gonna be the 24th Aldi Fonseca, the last driver, uh, last season i mean last time they ran here at this track back in season four ollie had led the most laps was in a great position for himself in third odds on favorite you look at the way they run at mile half tracks vincent soar gonna be in third cody reed gonna be starting in fourth place still searching for that win and he felt like he should have gotten it the last couple of weeks thomas green gonna be starting in fifth position in the double zero nick crawford gonna be starting in sixth danny cochran starting back in seventh cedric hunter in eighth anthony gaudio in ninth and finishing at our top 10 great qualifying time for the 19 so we find tyler dangler Starting in 11th, it's going to be the 10 of Jarrett Talmadge. Alongside him in 12th, it's going to be the 50 of Samuel Garcia. 13th in qualifying is going to go to GT Irizarry with his teammate Travis Everett starting alongside him in 14th. 15th is going to be Roberts pick of Ethan Smith back here in the 99 with 16th going to Joshua Freed. 17th is going to be Christopher Norris in the 38 machine with 18th in qualifying going to Martin Morales. 19th is going to be Joshua Kanata and rounding out the top 20 is the 8 of Noah Steele. And needing a good run. Start 15th in points. We'll be starting 21st here tonight. It's the 01 of Eric Krolik. Dakota Moni is going to be starting in 22nd position for the five, making his ISRC Larry Productions Truck Series debut. And the 26th machine starting in 23rd is Brandon Maddox, hoping for a solid run for himself. They're not qualifying, but bigger tracks seem to be a little bit tougher for himself. It's the 17 of Mason Cassidy. Jesse Thornock is going to be starting back in 25th. Matthew Greyhouse is going to be starting back in 25th. Sixth position, 27th goes to Ryan Ferraro. Starting all the way back in 28th place is going to be Justin Campbell. Watch out for that driver marching his way through the field. And Justin Smith going to be the last driver starting back in 29th place. we got some drivers that are going to be trying to really make their charge through the field. But 40 lap stage here to start tonight's race. Zach, that is going to be the crucial marker for these drivers. 40 laps can be long for some, but it also feels like a shootout at times with the way these drivers are going to be running up front. 
that it will feel like a shootout. I, I don't think you're going to see much separation during those uh, 40 laps of this stage. If we if we stay green, you might see a, you know packs of trucks break away, five, six trucks at a time. But it's going to be very, very interesting once we get later in the run to see who's got what because this track does have high tire wear, but it is late in the night. These trucks have a ton of grip, so it's kind of counterintuitive, so to say. And I think it's going to put on quite the show for us here with all these drivers. We know how aggressive they are, Sam. They're going to put on a show under these lights. A driver on the outside, 24 machine of all different sake of running a very special scheme here this evening, honoring his mentor, friend, and now could say fighter of Bobby Gill, who currently, again, is recovering after chemotherapy, dealing with brain cancer at this time. Thoughts and prayers go out to the family. Also, they have a GoFundMe that Holly has on that hood to go check out and support. As the drivers are set, they're ready for racing action. 150 laps, stage break at the end of lap 40. Let's get these drivers roaring at full speed as we are green for the Bobby Gale Brawl 150 here tonight as it's going to be John Forbes, Ollie Fonseca roaring down into turn number one. Great start from both lanes there as Fonseca really able to stay almost alongside of Forbes, but Forbes now is going to clear as they exit off the two. And Vincent Sora, what's going to be his choice? Look at this as they hold low down the back straightway. It looks like the Atlanta Super Speedway almost. They're staying in line, trying to break the draft if possible, and it's going to be John Forbes and nose ahead. All it's though, a little bit of a slip up and squeeze into the outside wall. It's going to be the 24 as Cody Reed just had nowhere to go. Gave a slight, a slight bump to the 24, and Ollie goes from second all the way almost outside of the top 20. Big thing for Ollie, it's just got to keep it together. Not too much damage, really just scuff the right side of that 24. If he can just gather it up here. Fonseca has the speed. He just got to now show the patience to work his way back up there. He's kind of in the hornet's nest here behind Kanata and alongside Freed. Lap one, give it to John Forbes. Lap two, it's going to be a nose ahead for Vincent Sora as they cross the line. The 15, not waiting for anybody. Sora, what's the lead and following right behind him? It's a double zero of Thomas Green. I think Thomas Green could be a dark horse in this race for sure, Sam. We talked about how good he was in the past here in Charlotte, but now right up in the mix early in this event, and uh, we'll see how Forbes and Sora play with Green right in the mix. I mean, Thomas Green initially joined the guy SRC Truck Series back in Season 2, then departed and moved away back in, at the end of Season 3, and... You know, for Thomas Green, never really got to see his fight between himself and his sort of very strong drivers. And uh, this is a, kind of our first, I would say, showing a mile and a half race scene between very two top competitors of this truck series. I'm so interested to see how these drivers are going to play out like this because it's so easy to overwork your equipment here in Charlotte because of how much grip you have early in the run. You really don't start to feel that fall off till about five, six, seven laps into a run. So you're really right now just going off basically, basically as much grip as you possibly have. Look at Forbes, he's just gonna dive to the inside now of Sora and try to make something happen on the bottom, but it's gonna be tough here I'm trying to keep those tires underneath you while others behind are just kind of lurking in the background. A dive move by John Forbes, something we saw a lot last week that assisted John Forbes getting into victory lane and here tonight wanting to get the clean air but drivers that are moving forward our top 10 some of the biggest movers so far 10th place up seven spots is christopher norris ethan smith is up six spots gt rosari and back in eighth is up five four for uh jared talmage as well as three positions up for anthony gaudio we're seeing everyone practically that's inside of our top 10 have moved up at least one or more positions except for john forbes and cody reed that both lost one spot currently that they have and the others dropping outside the top 10 such like the likes of Crawford said the Hunter they you know Tyler Dingler John Ali Fonseca who we saw had his incident like I think a lot of these drivers are trying to manage their equipment it's just going to be the question of will they be able to manage it enough this far back and be able to get back up there and you know not have the problem with it stalled out once they catch up this guy so this first one's going to tell us a lot here if we can stay green as the battle for the lead continues to stay side by side and Talking about the quality of drivers that we have between Vincent Sora and John Forbes. Well, the two of them are being so aggressive up front. It's making me a little bit more nervous, though, Zach. The side drafting and the almost pinching aspect that we're seeing from our top two. We're almost seeing contact every single time through the center of these corners. And 
you gotta be careful. No net code's a factor that you gotta watch out for, as that's the internet's random contact that can sometimes happen here in iRacing, but also just making contact in general. These drivers have to be careful between one another. That they really do, and this is, you know, Vince Asura's first time on a mile and a half in a long time with a lot of these guys, so it'll be a learning, learning case for him to see if he can immediately pick it right back up. And I think, like you said, I'm a little worried, too, with the race that's going to go down between the 15 and 11 and even the double zero. All three of those drivers, even you throw Danny Cochran in there, too, while you're at it, they're all very aggressive. You know, they, they are willing to lead every lap in the race. They're not willing to give an inch. They want to be in the prime position every time. And, you know, that's what you got to do when you're a race car driver. And it's going to lead to close moments for sure throughout the night for us. I mean, start listing down all the drivers that are in line. Uh, aggressive, you could put a, a blanket over our top 10 of some of the most aggressive drivers in the history of this series. And now they're all trying to fight for all the track position they can. Track position here at Charlotte, very prominent. That you're always looking for and early in runs is where you can make a lot of these passes. But Zach, the long run, is there even enough grip for these drivers to attempt these passes? that they're already making these bold moves with. They are using them up, Sam. I'm seeing a lot of slipping and sliding and a lot of the, the, the nose of the truck really not responding. And those front tires not gripping through the track and pushing out towards that wall. That's where I think drivers like Vince Asura, Thomas Green. I actually like where John Forbes is riding. He's actually in a pretty clean position right now with nobody really pressuring him. He's able to run a very smooth line, but a lot of these drivers are sliding the tires. And that's just going to make others that are outside the top 10 and right out there working around 8th and ninth position, they could be the ones that are really starting to make headway here around lap 25, 30 of the run. As our front drivers finally got the single file out with one another, Anthony Gaudio in the 3, the 10. Going to be a Jared Talmadge trying to figure out where they want to slot themselves. Talmadge uh, running a fun scheme with the Hendrick uh, in the trucks after Hendrick's dominance until yesterday. Maybe hoping for a little bit of that luck to rub off for himself as uh, those drivers you talked about, you know, 8th, ninth, 10th, the big gap is between 8th and ninth, and that ninth place driver is the 99 of Ethan Smith, kind of giving himself plenty of space to work with as he's watching our top seven just be right on top of one another. And I like where Ethan's sitting right here as we see where he's doing his... I looked at the lap times too for a lot of these guys. You know, the, most of the drivers up in this top eight, they've all ran a 29-second lap. Everybody usually down from ninth going back, they've ran 30-second laps for the best lap. So it just shows you they left a little bit on the table here. And I like that case because they're just letting the draft pull them around. This track has a lot of drafting power. And when you get pulled around here, you can save tons of tire. And it's definitely something that I think a lot of drivers are doing right now, as you can see the line of trucks. I think that's the most impressive thing is the fact that what you just noted on the fact of the fastest laps that those front seven or eight drivers have done ethan smith christopher norris really backing off their pace but they've also gained the most positions out of anyone at the start of this race with ethan smith up six christopher norris up seven they've taken the aggressive slash patient approach and kind of the race has fallen in their hands gifting them to these positions that they've been able to move forward with so critical to be efficient with your passes. You know, if you don't have to run those fast lap times to make oh. those passes, oh, there was some contact right there. It looks like Brendan Maddox, one of the newcomers here, is it looks oh. like Kralik's gonna run him over. Just runs him straight over through the center of the corner in the debut race for the 26. Goes around quickly here tonight. Brendan Maddox in one quick swoop, saw our camera shot of just aggressive racing around the 28. And it goes awry quickly drivers were trying to get around the 28 machine just a little like some aggressive racing for about a lap lap and a half it comes down to the exit turn four seeing Tyler the dangler and the bargain machine making the pass on the outside of Sam garcia trying to make his move and that coat right there you see that there was a foot of distance it just bounces the 28 high and then eric Rollick just running over the 26 right there yeah not the not the greatest there from Aaron. Unfortunately, getting into the rear of that 28 is uh, uh, Maddox definitely going to have uh, some 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 damage on that truck there from that rear ending and a little bit of a hit on the left side. But more or less than anything, this is going to shake up some strategy here, Sam. I think the question is going to be, do you come to pit road now because it's about halfway through the stage or do you save a set of tires here? Five sets in total, four in pit road. Looks like the leaders are going to make the decision to stay out. It's going to be our top 
eight staying out. Ethan Smith, Christopher Norris actually going to be some of the first drivers to hit pit road. I think that's a shocker to see. Actually, excuse me, that was uh, going to be Ethan Smith and Nick Crawford that enter pit road together and a few other drivers following in suit. Kind of a smaller field than I think we were expecting to make this stop. But if you're looking for some crucial bonus points, this is the gutsy call you got to go for and, and take these t sets of tires, especially on the fact that the field at the time of that yellow running almost a full second slower than their fastest times. Took the words right out of my mouth, Sam, there. A full second slower. So tires are going to make a big difference here. And from what it looks like, I can see, yeah, it looks like uh, Nick Crawford there and Ethan Smith, I believe, also taking four tires and fuel there. So I, I like, you know, I like the call. If you're back there, go get you some stage points and more or less it's going to get him some track position. We know Nick Crawford loves to get off strategy. I think uh, this is going to play into his hands here if we get green. Yeah, I mean, we've talked to Nick, and he said since he got his win, he knew he was pretty much locked into the playoffs with his win that he grabbed. He can try random strategies that maybe he wouldn't traditionally go for, and with how often he's done these oddball strategies, it's kind of turned into the usual to see. But Nick Crawford, we start all the way back in 22nd position. I think the most odd pit stop of all the drivers that came into pit row, that's 20th back to 29th that made this pit stop, Justin Campbell, the nine machine, just topped off on fuel. No tires were taken for the nine. They'll be starting it back in 21st position. I don't know. Shocker to see that someone would decide to take fuel and even pit during this stint. Yeah, I, you know, Sam, that's an interesting call for sure there from Justin Campbell because I, I don't see the benefit. The only benefit I can see from adding fuel to a race truck like these it will change the balance a little bit. It's going to drop the rear end of these trucks, squat it down a little bit more, stiffen up that rear a little bit, and even drop the spoiler out there a little bit. So that will loosen them up, and I know a lot of guys are fighting that tight condition as the run goes on. So maybe he's looking for the balance change there, but I feel like if you're going to come to pit road, you might as well put four on or just stay it out, like you said. Well, for those that just took for a set of tires in pit road, they went from four in pit road down to three for the rest of this race. And they're expected to take another set once the end of our stage is over at the end of lap 40. So some of these drivers might be leaving the rest of this race, 110 laps with just two sets of tires to work with. And I think for some drivers, they were willing to be kind of held captive in that zone. Well, others wanted to slight more freedom after the stage is over, but we'll see who picked the right strategy here for this restart, John Forbes, Vincent Sora, going to be your front two, as well as going to have Thomas Green, Cody Reed, Danny Cochran, Anthony Gaudio, going to be your front runners. As John Forbes getting himself set, psyched up for this restart, going to be the control vehicle down below. How do you set up for this pass? And does Vincent Sora have any more tires to fight back at the 11, or will the tires only back in 22nd position have a run into the restart zone? The Bobby Gill. Brawl 150 is back underway and a huge launch for the 11 of John Forbes. Great launch from that 11, like you said there, Sam. We didn't see much wheel spin from a lot of drivers around there, so it seems like they had the grip to get going. Now we'll see, does Forbes have the ability to hold off Sora after these tires have cooled down? Will this allow the 15 to have another shot back at the 11 down the back trail? Now, turn number three, and as you can see the John Forbes shots trying to look at his mirror see the action behind him where will Vincent Sora try to lie in a wake they currently are going to be doing almost some bump drafting on the straight with how close the 15 is down into turn number one Forbes holds steady Sora nowhere to go as one driver though off the exit of turn four issues for the 34 of Ryan Ferraro heavy damage Sam he had some contact in the middle of the or, or second part of that front trioval and just slam the pit wall exit and that truck is done for he is going to have to limp it back to pit road as he's going to have that required damage flag for major damage as we'll get to see what exactly happened to ryan ferraro as he's actually going to stop him not sure what tell him. ryan ferraro one of the drivers that took a set of tires to to see the outside 74 putting pressure of nick crawford 34 machine ferraro holding steady but then a Little wiggles, looks like maybe loose sensation for the nine. Clips the 34 and just clobbers that inside wall. Is Ferraro blown engine? Race most likely done for the 34, just on lap 19. Wow, that was an explosion of a hit. And it was just the lightest happen with the end. No, no control of that. And tough break for Ferraro, like you said, who took those tires and now going to have a 
major damage race truck to try to get fixed here now as we check back up to the front of the field. Looks like we're all in line. All in line for our top five. Battle for six is underway. Danny Cocker and Central Connor going to be side by side for a quick moment, but John Forbes still holds steady. But there's a new fighter in third position. Cody Reed in the 25 machine is making his charge. Bouncing the outside, inside. Where's the window for Cody to try to move forward after feeling kind of slided the last two weeks? Cody wants a win badly. And tonight, he feels like it's the night. He wants that win for sure, Sam. And He's had some really good runs when it comes to managing the tires. That's one thing I've noticed with him. He's done a very good job throughout the seasons here at least mile and a half, so really being good on long runs. He's in position now. If that long run can happen, he's here now to have a shot to battle with these top two. Riding on board with the 25 machines for the cockpit of Cody Reed. Certainly trying to make his push forward if possible. Do an update on Ryan Ferrari. He has officially left the session. Parking it in the garage is the 34 after his contact with Justin Gable. He can see that again for Ryan, but battle up front continues to stay in line. But drivers with fresh rubber, they are on the move. 11th place is Oliver Seca. 12th is Nick Crawford, and they are moving forward quickly just under a second and a half away from our leaders. They've hit a little bit of a roadblock now. Where will they go? Will they make it three wide? Is going to be the question here. Spawn Seca behind the likes of the 14 years Zari, Crawford the likes of behind Tollins, and look at this off the exit of two. They're getting so close to Christopher Norris. They're going to contact with the 24, but everybody saves it and gathers it up down the back straight away. Well, they're going to be saying three one down in turn number three. Can he give enough space to one another? And who's going to be willing to be a little bit too aggressive? Mason Cassidy just sends that go Mason machine on the outside, able to make it work. But Christopher Norris feeling the most hurt as the 38 now going to be falling outside of our top 15. Big moment for him there. So he actually had contact from the 10 Atomage that sent that 38 sideways. He did a good job to gather it up. Now he's just got to hang on for the stage. Stage points don't look likely. If you're at 38, you got to keep that truck nice and clean to have the ability to battle later. Keep the fight, keep pushing forward. And again, some drivers driving with a little bit more on their sleeves. Ollie Fonseca, highest runner of those with fresh rubber and the underdog pick. A lot of drivers internally throughout this week rooting for the 91 of Mark Morales. Morales has fresh rubber as well as the 91 is trying to follow in line with Ollie Fonseca. Man, oh man, they are barging their way through now as they're going to be side by side with Tom, uh, Green and the likes of Gaudio. The next on the line is going to be Cody Reed as the 91 almost into the back of the 24. We had to check out a little bit deep to the 25, but it's side by side for the lead too. Vincent Soros sees him all this cover of blue tires. He wants to get around the likes of John Forbes. Two by two, almost all the way through. It's Ollie Fonseca, the only driver that's got an outside and inside clear, but now he'll be stuck side by side as Mar Morales is right on the tailpipe. You're seeing the extra little bit of speed, and Morales is going to send it down low. We're going to go three wide down into turn number three. Mar Morales is over the inside row is going to work. He backs out. Ollie pushes Vinny. And now Ollie Fonseca oh. makes the charge forward. But here's a newcomer. It's going to be Noah Steele pushing John Forbes to the outside. But Mar Morales holds steady. They're scattering, bumping, and somehow keep it all together with 13 laps to go before the stage break gets thrown. What a wild moment these tires have thrown into this stage break right here. As you can see how much more speed they have. It's Forbes now falling back. So he Vincent Sore, though, likes to know his steel is out with Sore. Well, he's connection there for a second, but looks like he's back. But look at this. Marvin Rounds bounces at high three wide in the middle with the old tires. Vincent Sore just trying to hang on now. It looks like Mason Cassidy coming through also. Mason Cassidy with fresh work. He was willing to make that outside row work. And all these drivers making the push forward and now going to be your top five. All drivers with fresh rubber and able to make all these great advancements. The only driver that has yet to close in on the gap is going to be Ethan Smith back in 14th. He's been a lot more patient on his tires. I'm really being aggressive as we've seen our top five be. But right now it's all Ollie Fonseca up front. And Noah still second. Murmur Alice battling with Nick Crawford for second. As Ethan Smith, you see on screen, the 99 kind of boxed in with nowhere to go. This is some crazy racing with these guys all stacked up with these older and these fresher tires coming through. And right now, you see Steele trying to do his job to run down those uh, down the leader of Ali Fonseca. But here comes Crawford along with Mason Cassidy trying to pass that 91 of Martin Morales. But you can see farther back there, Anthony Gaudio on the 11 machine. He is right in the mix of it because they got that 30 or that 99 there. Ethan Smith right behind them. This is the group that's really stacked up. 
really been stacked up and you know just as we're watching this action on screen we want to give note of the game machine and noah Steele. noah comes into tonight 24th in points he has missed two races this season coming into tonight's race and Right now, I'm most cons you know surprised to see Noah running so well here this evening, but it, because he's inside of our top 25 points, oh, oh no, it's been around, it's gonna be Thomas Green. There's the caution being thrown as the double zeros race went from high hopes to now disappointment. It looks like Anthony Gaudio, they're just clipping him, turning him across the nose, and man, oh man, for Thomas Green, that is the worst case scenario for him. I think we'll get to see uh, Exactly how it plays out, but looks like you might make the wrong group of cars. No, here. That this is good. There are two separate incidences. So this is the first one that happened. So for Matthew Greathouse, this was right before the yellow was thrown. He was getting into an incident here with Joshua Freed. Slices off the nose of the 39. He'll break loose, try to keep it off the wall, and then right in front of them the 51 gets the caution he needed as Anthony Gaudio spins the double zero right into the worst kink you could hit. Yes, he found the spot in the wall that you don't want to hit, and he found it, Sam. So tough break there for Green, and really nothing he could have done. It looks like he was trying to deploy the side draft there on the likes of the 99 at Ethan Smith here, and we're going to see from his own where I think for him, I don't know if Claudio didn't know that 99 was to his outside or felt like he could get up in behind him and just misjudge the look in the nose, but just going to turn this double zero here, and we're going to see he's a helpless bystander for this ride. There's just nothing you can do. You can try to slam the throttle pedal. You can hit the brake. But the same destination you're heading towards is you're going to be hitting that wall. You hate to see that for the double zero again. A solid run that he was hoping for. It goes up in smokes quickly. And that could be our second driver out of this race. But the timing of this yellow gives a chance for a few drivers to gamble a little bit more. We saw the, the splitting of this stage at lap 20 with the first caution that came out it was around lap that a 17 when a first caution hit now going to be 30 laps in this run you're going to have a five lap shootout to see how many positions you can grab for john forbes cody reed they'll be starting back in 15th position but here's what our weather conditions look like zach uh i would say pretty neat and tidy for this field the wind's kind of fluctuating a little bit but perfect racing conditions for everyone to have grip out on track Oh, it definitely is some great racing conditions. Just a few clouds out there in the sky. Not too much wind, even. I mean, there's a, there's a good little eight mile an hour west wind, and it seems like it stayed pretty constant in that direction about that speed as it kind of fluctuates there between the seven to eight mile an hour. But it's uh, great conditions, personally. 78 degree track temp. You couldn't really ask for more grip for these guys, as uh, they've definitely put on a show and show when they have the grip, they're willing to use it there, Sam. They certainly are, and it's been amazing to watch these drivers having a little bit extra grip when you get fresh rubber, the big moves, but even on old tires, it's been a pleasure to watch these battles and the way that they've ebbed and flowed so far as Joshua Kanata going to be making a late pit stop. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining with us here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting. You're watching the ISRC Larry Art Productions Truck Series. Season 6, Race 8 is here tonight at Charlotte Motor Speedway for a very special night for the driver that's leading tonight's race, Ali Fonseca, honoring his mentor friend uh, of Bobby Gill, who's dealing with cancer currently right now. And the family is hoping for more thoughts and prayers as they're dealing with this tough time as Bobby is currently recovering after his first stint of chemotherapy uh, for his brain cancer that he's dealing with. But Ali's hoping for the best, but this will be our second caution so far this evening. The drivers get prepared to go back to green flag racing wait for the pace car lights to turn off but zach first 35 laps two cautions in the books uh a look at the past season two we had five cautions in total season three we had two cautions and then back in season four the last time they ran we had three so if they stop having cautions until our stage break they would be keeping to the trend that we've had the last two seasons otherwise the season two trends look a little bit more autonomous uh on the outside for these drivers on how they're going to be dealing with this uh race for the rest of the night it definitely is going to be uh, interesting to see if it stays on track there or, uh, you know, we get a little bit of out of whack and out of trend for sure. So we'll see how it all shakes out. But I think this this restart is going to be uh, pr pretty interesting to see because you got guys who've done a little bit of strategy, like you said, who decided to come down and get tires. I think they're going to look to go slow here, though, on this restart, save a little bit of tire and stay out at that lap 40 stage break because – 
fuel, you're not going to be able to make a one stop happen. Everybody's going to have to make at least two stops after the stage break. If it goes green, I think you're going to see uh, definitely some interesting strategy with a few guys staying out here after the stage break. How do the drivers set up for this run? Again, tonight honoring Bobby Gill. He's on his recovery. It's tonight's read is the Bobby Gill Brawl 150. Uh, Bobby Gill, a prominent race car driver back in the uh, 90s and early 2000s for himself. Uh, Bobby's career, looking back, he actually raced in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series in 1996 and 2000, had a total of 16 starts. But a lot of his dominance actually came in the way of short track racing in the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Championship, where he won three straight from 99, 2000, and 2001, and as well got a sport championship in 2007. Also a two-time winner of the Snowball Derby back in 1993 and 97, and an All-American 400 winner in 1994. Again, tonight is honoring for Bobby Gill as Again, tonight is honoring Bobby as he's recovering after dealing with chemotherapy and hoping to see Bobby uh, find a miracle for himself and his family. But up front, it's the driver that's honoring him, the driver that sponsored this race. It's Ali Fonseca up front, hoping to maximize on his stage points as we're back to green flag racing. The 24 pulls away and hopes he's had a big enough gap to hold back Steele Crawford and the rest of the field that just got fresh rubber back in 15th place. Ali was definitely the driver that didn't want to see that yellow come out for this beginning of the stage break because here comes the run, big run from the 74 because the 15 of Sora, he's gotten speed here on this restart with these tires cooling down. Massive speed from 15, a little bit of a scare to bring the fuel for good on ease. But if we get a caution at any moment before the end of lap 40, that will also count as our stage break is driver hit Mixie for third position. It's Mason Cassidy, Vincent Sora side by side. Mark Morales is also in the mix. And there's the 99 of Ethan Smith trying to work that outside groove. But a driver that we have not talked about because he started all the way back practically in the last, the nine machine of Justin Campbell. He has just took fuel and somehow it's inside our top 10. That's super impressive for him to be up inside the top 10. That fuel definitely maybe helping the balance of that race truck. But right now, Fonseca holding on, but it's Vincent Sora and the other likes of drivers. So he's sitting kind of right in the middle of this pack with Praylin, the 13 of Everett, the three of Gaudio, the other drivers who took tires on this last stop. Drive that took the, who's the highest of the freshest of rubber out on track. Sean Forbes, 10 machine. He's going to be on the inside for a driver to be three wide. Currently battling for 10th place, trying to move up to eighth. Impossible as they're going to be staying three wide right in front of this group. It's going to be seeing Ethan Smith hold steady, but it's Danny Cochran stuck in the sucker hole. He's going backwards in the middle, looking like a Christmas tree as they're one, two, three wide going through as the field. 40 is here. End of this lap will be the stage breaker. Will we get a caution before then? As Ollie Fonseca is keeping the lead. Nick Crawford, Mason Cassidy, they're closing in on what spot they could be at. But the battle for the 10th place spot, the last bonus point, it's on Zach. They're all on top of one another. This is some straight up plate racing right here, folks. You can see the different styles and strategies. It's all stacking this group up, and there's nowhere to go. If you ever been in a traffic jam, well, this is pretty much LA for you. There is the flag for the stage. And it's close. Anthony Gaudio, or is it Ethan Smith? The timing of the yellow flag being thrown, they wait until 10th place crosses the line to throw the yellow. And it was so close between the two. There's a little bit of a switch up of Gaudio and Smith at the time. They're waiting to solidify where they need to be on track position. But your stage winner is going to be the 24 of Ollie Fonseca here tonight. Good job by Ollie there. That's a huge moment. And, you know, like he's like we all are rooting for Bobby Gill there for for him. And it's really cool to see what, what Ollie's doing for him winning the stage. That's a huge moment for that team. And, man, oh, man, what a crazy into stage one. Can't wait to see how this race plays out. I mean, Ollie again, a driver that comes into tonight. Uh, Bobby Gill, after doing racing, went over to doing a lot more of fabricating work for racing teams. And that's where Ollie Fonseca actually met Bobby Gill, worked under him. And uh, your stage winner for Ollie Fonseca, sponsored by Morecast. We'll talk to the 24 once pit stops are over, but here's gonna be your top 10 finishers. Maximizing on his bonus points is gonna be Ollie Fonseca. Second place goes to Nick Crawford, Mason Cassidy in third. Fourth goes to Noah Steele. Mark Morales fifth. Sixth goes to John Forbes. Vincent Sore seventh, eighth is Going to be Jared Talmadge. Ninth goes to Justin Campbell. And Anthony Gaudio was able to sneak ahead at the timing of that yellow flag. As the drivers enter pit road, 
who stays out, who pulls in, because there's still a major swappage of different strategies out there on track, Zach. That there really is. This is uh this is gonna shake things up, folks. This looks like Gaudio, I believe Cody Reed, Aaron Kralik, the likes of Christopher Norris, and a few others gonna stay out here along uh, Samuel Garcia, I believe the other one, along with Jared Talmadge and John Forbes. Driver, those are all drivers that actually pitted under our last caution, decided to come into pit road. Uh, I mean, decided to stay out. Drivers are just leaving now, topping off on fuel. Were drivers that were part of that also early pit, earlier pit stop. GT Rosari and Travis Everett could just top off on fuel. Holy Fonseca back it on track. Gonna be, four, gonna be back in 10th place for the 24 machine. As the drivers get out there on course, we'll see if we can actually talk to the, the 24 machine of Oli Fonseca, get his thoughts of becoming our Morecast stage winner. We'll queue up that 24 machine. Oli, it's Sam and Zach up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you guys. Well, Oli, stage winner, took the gamble under our first uh, caution of the day, taking tires, and it's worked out perfectly for yourself, man. How are you feeling out there on course, being our stage winner, but going to be starting in the middle of the field? Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm glad I uh, was able to rebound after my horrendous mistake there. Man, that was uh, that was rough. I, I just felt like I got the air taken off the, the spoiler there. I think Cody kind of tucked up behind me, and I, I just, I don't know, I just lost it. And uh, credit to all the guys around me for saving it there, and uh, minimal, minimal damage. I think we're going to be just fine. So, um, yeah, I took those tires, drove through the field, got that bonus point for uh, the playoffs, so that's always good. Um, so yeah, we drove through there once. I think we can do it again. Definitely was a impressive drive there, Ali. Man, I tell you what, it was fun to watch. How hard was it to you know bounce back from that and not kind of get down on yourself after that start? Because you know with so much good track position to lose it that early, how, how easy was it to stay in the game? Yeah, you just gotta look at the big picture. Um, and credit to my spotter Brandon, he does a phenomenal job of uh, keeping my head in the game. Um, I could have very easily let that you know snowball into a bigger problem but you know we rebounded um had an opportunity to make the call made the call drove up through the field and uh got the stage win so uh we're just gonna keep on being patient well all the uh pace we're still waiting on the pace car lights to go off i know tonight a little bit more of a, an important race for you uh, the floor is now yours to talk about bobby if you'd like uh otherwise we'll send you back to your team yeah absolutely um first of all thank you guys so much for allowing me to do this um, for Bob. Um, I owe Bob so much. Um, he's done so much for my career. Um, he's taught me everything I know about fabrication and, and really uh, being able to work in a, in a motorsports program, right? Um, and he's just such a legend of the sport. Um, so yeah, you know, I got the GoFundMe link on the truck. I'm sure it's probably on YouTube or on the broadcast or somewhere, but um, feel free to donate to him and his family for what they're going through. You know, it's, it's just tragic, man. Um, and I just thought it'd be kind of cool to turn what you know is a hobby for me into something that might benefit him um someone i really look up to so i appreciate you guys for letting me do this for him well we, honestly congratulations to you again for being the more cast stage winner and we hope to be talking to you at the end of the night here ollie thank you well that'll be the 24 machine of ollie fonseca racing for ftb uh, as he goes back to his team zach uh, certainly when you're driving with something a little bit extra on your sleeves it always feels like you're you're almost uh always get that little bit extra horsepower when you're out on the track it really does it's almost like it it almost calms you and makes you a little bit more focused i feel like it's it's a weird thing i think it's a human instinct when you know we have those emotions and feelings going through our mind that we, we just get into a, a more locked in zone and i think uh you've seen that from ollie here tonight it was definitely locked in to get back up there played the amazing strategy also so that i think that's going to be a huge thing for him because now he's going to be able to restart with some of the freshest tires and be right here you know some good track position gonna be posting in the chat again all i talked about the gofundme link that you can go check out in the chat is also the gofundme link if you'd like to check out more about bobby gill's story and the way that he's trying to recover for himself his wife made the gofundme to support family medical expenses but tonight's race bobby gill brawl 150 
Well, the sprawling for the stage is over, but again, different strategies are still on the line. Old tires for our top seven. Okay, they hold off. The rest of the field have just got some fresh rubber. Here we go as we're back to green flag racing for the Bobby Gill Brawl 150 here at Charlotte as we run on board with Christopher Norris starting in fifth. Great start here from Norris as he's going to be all over the door of Anthony Gaudio. We're going to get to see how can he hook it up. This first couple laps, very loose on cold tires. And Norris playing that strategy has got himself some track position after some early woes. Early woes, great times for himself. Couple of drivers from deeper in the field. Now it's a big slip up, so we keep it straight as Norris keeps his foot in the throttle, trying to get by Anthony Gaudio. And be a strong one run for the 38 machine. And up front, they're even getting closer in battling with one another. It's John Forbes, Jared Talmich, Cody Reed. Those three drivers all wanting to continue with some strong runs, but it's Jared Tolman, I would say, with the driver that needs the most of it as Nick Crawford ships it three wide deeper in the field. Big moves being made. I see Vince Asaurus said it three wide. Nick Crawford did it. It's go time. They know they have to get up there because the likes of John Forbes up there. That's not a good sign for a lot of these guys because they know it's not that big of a tire wear difference probably now between that front group and you and you got to make up time through traffic also looking at the laps uh, i believe it's around eight green flag lap difference between those that are up front to the shot that we're seeing a driver trying to make their way forward first driver on the freshest set of tires gonna be the 15 of vincent sora just moving up to sixth position next driver to watch out for ollie from sake on the 24 who's kind of been trapped and stuck no one really comes up in place to go forward driver that seems to be wanting to make all the moves 74 of nick crawford but fastest lap you see the purple vincent sora is grooving right now just putting down the fastest lap of the night he is pushing Sam. I tell you what, I, I watched him there for a moment. He is not wasting any time. I think a lot of the drivers in the group behind him that we just saw kind of saving their stuff. But you can see Vince Sora. He's just using the fresher tires he has to him. And I, I'm starting to think that maybe these old tires out front are going to be a big detriment for these guys because it seems like the 15 just has so much more grip. Has more grip, but is he overcooking those tires? As Cody Reed's gonna bounce to the outside lane. Reed's trying to get himself that clean air to work with. As now the teammates from Snow Desert Racing gonna be stacked side by side. John Forbes, Reed, and Cody Reed and John Forbes. They've they both have been trying to get into the victory lane all throughout this season. Thought maybe Daytona was the run. As coming off of four, they were in line taking the white flag, but ultimately didn't work out there. John Force finally grasped his first win of the season last week at Gateway, where Cody Reed really thought that was going to be his race to grab. And here tonight, the 24 continues to try to, I mean, 25, excuse me, tries to make his way forward, but looming now in third, it's Vincent Sora in the 15. Here he goes already to the inside of John Forbes here. And I'm questioning Sam if he is burning those tires up. He's going so fast compared to the likes of Fonseca, others who are all in that same set of tires. We could see Sora maybe struggle for that longer run here. And But you never know. Also, with the way this race is, if it stays green, you may want to stop every 35 laps. So we might not get that long of run. So you got to go out there and probably use up the tire while you have it. Again tonight, supporting Sora Bobby Kill, who's dealing with uh, his chemo treatment, trying to help deal with his cancer. As driver's going to be three wide for the lead, but just pinning in the chat is the GoFundMe link if you'd like to go support. As Cody Reed to be on the inside leading that lap. That's a great bonus point for the 25 machine. But Vincent Sore with fresh tires going to be stuck in the middle. Reed's got to be careful. And backing off is going to be second and third as the 25 solidifies himself in the lead position. But for how long as John Forbes luckily has the outside lane? better spot. I mean, Zach, we talk about defensive running here late in Charlotte. Forbes is in that spot. That he is. We'll see how this works out now with these drivers, because the big thing there was Vince Sword just couldn't get that move to stick through the middle, and he knew if he didn't back out, that 25 was squeezing up the racetrack. It would have been an incident. So smart move from Vince Sword there, but now he's got to figure out another way back around John Forbes, because he's been able to leapfrog back around him. Moving forward, back anywhere you can go. Bump drafting into the corners for some. Dan Cochran, Meyer back in 10th place for the two machine. He's getting a great shot of Aaron Crawley, Cedric Hunter on their charge to try to go forward. But uh, looking at drivers on full tires, Aaron Crawley's one of them in that 01. Going backwards pretty quickly. He's going to be careful with the drivers on older tires. They're going to fall back. 
I mean, they're right around that window where the tire difference is going to be just growing to be bigger and bigger as the run progresses. As the drivers up front still dicing back and forth, Nick Crawford moves up to sixth, and Oli Fuss take up to fifth, and Vincent Sora finally has a chance to take the lead. And he does. He's going to get that lap led there as he just got to the right third quarter panel of the 11. But will he be able to clear it? Because we've seen so far, you get to the lead, it's kind of tough to even hold it off. We've seen John Forbes do it for a little while. And Vincent Sora with that little bit of fresher tires, will that be enough for him? to hold these drivers back. But you can see Fonseca back there. He's been slowly and methodically working his way. He's up to four, along with Nick Crawford now looking to take over six passenger Thomas around the outside of here four. I like the, the 24 and the, the 74 strategy here. Just kind of slowly marching their way through. Slowly making their way forward. Danny Cochran, such an honor, and back in 10th and 11th. Those are the other drivers that are on so much set of rubber compared to Vincent Sora, our leader. And Ollie Fonseca is now in third as you see a big wiggle from the likes of the two machine of Danny Cochran as Trevor out of the Cedric Connor as the two machine slices back and forth. But seeing those drivers, older drivers starting to fade back. GP Rosari in 14, Anthony Gaudio, they're getting stuck with one another. Not really any place to go, but looking at the battles of these Shriners, this is sixth, fifth, and fourth on screen of Nick Crawford in the 74, John Forbes in the 11. Jerry Talmadge in the 10. Talmadge, John Forbes, old tires, and trying their best to hold on. That they are. They're trying their best, Sam. And, you know, they're doing a valiant effort really, really well so far. And we'll see how long they can hold on for. But Fonseca and Crawford just continue to cut through. And you can see the likes of Christopher Russia. He's just hanging on. He's got the likes of Gaudio, who also stayed out with them. But Ken Cochran and GT Rosari and, and Hunter find their way around these drivers because right now they're getting held up while Alexa Fonseca and Crawford and Sora are driving away. They're driving away, but last time around through three and four, Vincent Sora had a big save as Cody Reed gave a great shot in the center of three and four. This go around was supposed to give that same shot. Instead, we'll have to just watch the 15 drive away. But these small little contacts in the center of the corner, worst place to make contact, but We've had some amazing saves so far to keep a screen. Yeah, they really have. And look at this now. Crawford side by side with Alexa Fonseca as they got stacked up behind the teammate of Crawford there with Reed. And what will they do down here in three and four? It's going to be the question. Will Reed wash high here and allow his teammate? But he's going to get the 24 to the outside. It's going to be three wide here off the exit of four. You want for a quick moment. Oh, Fonseca backs out. Let's keep that 24 again. Of the wall does not want to grab any more extra damage as John Forbes now getting into the mix. Says drivers on old tires still keeping it close in the fight. Vincent Sora hasn't just yapped away from the field, everyone's still in pretty close proximity. They're not, you know, this is kind of giving me shades of Las Vegas, Zach, of how close these drivers are on, on top of one another and not really breaking away this late new run. Completely agree with you, Sam. This is very similar to that case and I don't see it happening at all tonight. I think you see right here Crawford and Fonseca, they get up the second and third. They're going to be quickly right on the back bumper of this 15 up front. You just can't get away from each other. You don't have enough power. The arrow is too strong. It breaks such a big hole in the, in the air that it really allows you to pull up to somebody. That's his drivers. They need to stay in line. These drivers continue to just stay packed up, and as they're this packed, it's going to sight and sound of what it's like for these drivers, a little bit of a crank it up to hear what these trucks are wearing like. And on the middle of the pack is close to one another, but what big moves will you find as we go to our crank it up with the drivers off the exit of turn two?
And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Vincent Sorso leading the way. Got to see some of those close racing action off the exit of turn two. Deeper in the field. Got to see a little bit more wiggles and drivers moving forward. Behind machine, Justin Campbell. Not really making the big moves that we thought he'd be making. Right now, fired back with the double uh, with the 99 of Ethan Smith and the 91 of Mark Morales. But Zag watching uh, the drivers on the crank it up. All pretty much single file, but we're starting to see that swing, it seems like, of everyone on the old rubber, even if you came on pit road the last caution. Yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of a big swing for sure for a lot of these drivers. It looks like the likes of the 25 of Cody Reed, he's starting to really struggle. The one that's hanging on the best is the one we see right here, John Forbes fighting with Danny Cochran, trying to hold on for positions, but, uh, you know, John is just really doing a lot better than anybody else right now who's been on the older set. Danny Cochran trying to get by this 11 machine, not even do so just yet. In the pack behind them, getting a little bit mixy as well with Mason Cassidy, Anthony Gaudio, Cody Reed's back there with Cedric Hunter, and GTR Azari is waiting in the wings where he plays himself at this moment. Mason Cassidy again talked about the, the poor qualifying run for the 17, kind of did an opposite of what he's been doing. Uh, the last four weeks has qualified well. Then race trim comes around and he kind of fades outside of the top 10 here tonight. Qualifies back in 24th and is just inside of our top 10. It really is that case for him tonight as Cassidy is really charged up through. And right now racing the likes of GT or Zari, who very good at this track. GT has been in the past and been very, very good at this style of racing. And so, you know, it's going to be a hard pass, but he does get that done. Now have Anthony Gaudio up there along with the likes of Cody Reed. The driver I've been watching kind of making some lap time gains is that seven of Cedric Hunter. He's now made his way up the seventh. He's got Jared Talmadge on his list next. And Talmadge done an excellent job right here, Sam, on the older tires. Him and John Forbes is the best of that group. Yeah, I mean, I think for Jared Talmadge, again, a driver that we know has success. His teammate, Thomas Green, won this race back in season two. And Jared's been the, the kind of lucky one of those two drivers in the end of the race where Jarrett's just been trying to hope to inch closer and closer maybe to a winning position and just outside of the top 25 coming into tonight's race and with how well we've seen the 10 run playoffs if we can get a win here tonight in the grass of the 10 machine it could be bouncing out on those cutoff drivers it's waiting for a chance but for the field right now single file but for us here up in the booth we will take a break when we come back it's going to be more racing action. Pit stops right around the corner. Who will make the early stop? Or will we see everyone take it until they're out? But well, you're watching the Bobby Gill Raw 150 at Charlotte. It's been a pleasure to give you all the coverage here tonight. Thor leads the way. When we come back, pit stops right around the corner.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Freaky Fast Broadcasting. You're watching on Monday night, the ISRC Larry R. Productions Truck Series. It's season six, race eight, as we are here at Charlotte, Lobby of Gill Brawl 150, and pit stops are underway. Aldi Fonseca was the first driver to pit two laps ago, and more drivers enter into the box with Nick Crawford, Christopher Morris joining in the mix. The drivers are about to be trying to make the hard decision. Do you turn this race into a two-stop, or do you have enough time to push the fuel out a little bit longer and turn this race into a one-stop? A lot of different questions these drivers have to answer for us, but currently it's Vincent Sora leading the way. Danny Crawford will not be entering pit road, but Zach, this is crunch time for a lot of drivers. Pit stalls are getting busy that they are pit stalls getting busy and this is right around the time i felt like i felt like lap 80 would be that marker to hit it seems like 78 was a lot for everybody else it's like side by side for our leaders of cedric Hunter and john forbes when will they come down is going to be a question i think they're going to have to ask themselves as you see them side by side but i think 80 is the marker you want to hit i don't think that one stop's going to happen you're going to have to save a lot of fuel for that to work as John Forbes now going to hit his pit stall, joining him going to be Anthony Gaudio, Mason Cassidy, Justin Campbell, and Zag. The fuel window for these drivers, I know what mile and a half, it can be tricky, especially also with the timing of caution flags that were coming out. But what is that number that these drivers are really searching for if they're just running it dry immediately? If you're going to run it dry, you're going to you're going to look at about a 49 and a half to 50 laps. But if you save some fuel. I'd imagine you can take it to about 51, 52, but 53 is what you would need to do for a run if you want to make it on that one stop. But we have our leader, Senator Hunter, come down and look at Cody Reed and both GT is already having big wiggles. And GT is still sliding around and keeps it together. But Cody Reed, the biggest slide, it looks like some rear end damage to the 25 machine as he pulls into his stall. You hate to see that for drivers again that we're running up front instead of our top 10. Now gonna have to deal with some of this damage. There's no fast repair for this field. If you grab any damage, you hope that it's minimal and you don't have to spend too much time in pit road getting those repairs done. But as these drivers leave their pit stalls, it looks to be a good stop for himself. The composite bodies there, Sam, are gonna help a little bit for that. Those drivers that did catch a little bit of damage there. So that's it's going to help them a little bit, but you don't want to get any aero damage as you see everything cycling through with pit stops going through. Ooh, big slide for John Forbes coming off the twos. He's going to get the slice by Cedric Carter. I mean, he was 90 degrees sideways. Big scares. Hold on for dear life moments as we continue to march forward. And John Forbes, winner of last week, might have had to save the night as the 11. Marches his way forward, and we're still in the middle of this pit cycle. More drivers into pit road. Our top eight still need to come to pit road for their stops. Being led by Jared Talmadge, who is staying out until that fuel runs empty. The 10 forced into pit road here shortly, but oh no, trouble on the back stretch. Cody Reed slamming the outside wall. I think he also might have gotten a slight contact, also the three of Anthony Gaudio. Definitely looks like that might have been the case there. And talked about damage you know building up that is major damage and it was really what that came down to sam is it, i went back and looked at it cold tires firing up here just probably didn't think about the security level was going to be lower in the rear end it steps out and then like i said kind of side swipes the three of gaudio as he goes by but i think gaudio luckily not going to catch too much damage from that as you see he's right here behind this 91. As the three machine ducks down low, tries to make his way forward. Martin Morales trying to stay off the outside wall, and Cody Reed with the amount of damage that he's picked up into pit road for the 25. Tells that his machine not loving the fact that he is caught up in that mess as he will get his damage repair, but most likely his race might be done as Justin Campbell making his surge past Joshua Freed as well as Tyler Dangler. The Nines going forward in the 19 over the radio, entering pit road this go around. There we go, 19 gonna come down and we'll see how long does the likes of Jared Thomas, Ethan Smith, Jesse Thornup, Travis Everett, and Joshua Freed take it because looks like now Kralik's gonna stay out, Morales. So still seven drivers up front who have yet to pit. They're about 13 seconds ahead of Vincent Sora, 11 seconds ahead of that 15. So they'll be quickly closing in with that 15 truck. But I tell you what, Sam, it's going to be uh, interesting when this all cycles through with if anybody can stretch it to that lap 100. 
as Jesse Thornock still trying to run his way forward in second place. Gets past 116 and Joshua Panada. I haven't talked about Joshua Panada really at all here tonight. Well, but back in 19th position and up to 15 at this moment. Jesse Thornock covered the qualified back in 25th place. Right now banking on a caution flag to be thrown, but Zach, you talked about drivers maximizing on their fuel. Jared Thomas got a little bit of assistance with the time of caution flags, but the 10 been out there for 53 laps and expected to hit pit road here shortly, but he's being boxed out, as was not able to go in that time, and now is in the question of no man's land. No one knows if he's got enough fuel to make it to the box, as he will once again have a driver who is inside. Talmadge is in a scary spot. Does he have the fuel to get to pit road? That is going to be the case. I think I worry about for him coming here. And you can see, look, he immediately drops left here because he's saying, you know what, I have to pit, guys. And look, can I go to my inside here? So we're going to see. I think this 10 for sure come to pit road this time. And it looks like, yeah, coming to pit road. So did a good job to make it that far. Like you said, had the assistance of those yellow flags, but not going to be able to get to that lap 100 work because he did not stop at that stage break. That's Jesse Thornock going to be gifted the lead for the 20 machine. Ethan Smith going to be in second. Travis Everett going to be in third place for himself. Still out there on track is Joshua Freeman in fourth and fifth. And Mark Morales, well, they've been excited to make their pit stop. Going to be a good question as seeing drivers split in the gap. Fourth in the 99, going to be stuck in the middle as Noah Steele makes the pass in the inside. Outside, good to the GT or is as these drivers taking every little bit of the track to use this good rubber that they have right now. When you got that big of a speed difference, you find the open lane, you go around. And that's what these drivers have been implementing tonight. And it's set up for some fantastic racing for us up here. And I'm telling you what, I can't wait to see how this is again is going to shake out because of the likes of Vincent Sora is about 19 seconds back from Jesse Thorne, our leader. So if they were able to make this one stop work, I'm not putting it out of the realm that that is going to be the winning strategy. Well, as we march closer and closer to lap 100, we want to give a shout out to our amazing sponsors here for the ISRC Truck Series. Start things off with the title sponsor of the Truck Series, and Larry R Productions. Larry R Productions is a great variety entertainment YouTube channel. If you're looking for some good laughs and entertainment to get you through the day, go to Larry R Productions on YouTube or on Instagram. Check out Larry's fantastic videos. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Hot Lap Threads, our qualifying grid sponsor. If you want to get some help out some of the drivers, as Hot Lap Threads has great, uh, uh, going to be racing apparel for sim drivers, real life racing, everything you're looking for on hotlapthreads.com. Thank you again for Hot Lap Threads being our qualifying grid sponsor and your Morecast stage winning sponsor, Morecast. Morecast is a place to go. Head on over to at Morecast on Instagram for a variety of NASCAR content, including diecast memes and iRacing. Also check out Morecast on YouTube for diecast reviews, NASCAR discussions, and more. As those are gonna be your main sponsors here to help out for the ISRC Truck Series. Still waiting for drivers to enter pit road, but this is the battle for the lead. These two are going to have to make their pit stop very shortly. But Zach, why not put on a show and waste a little bit of time battling between one another? I tell you what, I like this. And with all the different strategies playing out different speeds, there's a very likely case that we could see a yellow in this sequence. So why not stretch it out? If they get a caution right now, Ethan Smith, Jesse Thorner, Joshua Freed, Martin Morales, it'd be like they won the lottery. I mean, we're talking about late cautions, I think big blemish might come around the fact that you look at the end of last week's race at gateway i know uh, a couple of drivers very upset based off their interviews of, of how the last couple of weeks have finished out of it being looking like it's going to be a clean green finish at the end and then with seven eight laps to go a caution flag comes out and just changes everything at the end and here tonight drivers might be having that thought looming in the back of their mind of i want the best position what if the lit caution comes out again here this season? Oh, well, I tell you, they, they're doing a good job of simulating real NASCAR, that's for sure. You, you know when it's a real NASCAR race, there's always uh, itching to put that yellow flag out at that last moment, and it seems like uh, things just go haywire in iRacing when you get down to those final moments. Just guys trying to get a little too much maybe sometimes, but you got to understand that that's part of the racing. And look at this, here comes Ethan Smith coming down, and... He's well short of the distance that they need to make. Same with Thornock here. We'll see Morales continues. It looks like he'll come down. So 
I don't think anybody going to be able to take it around 55 laps here tonight. That's just not going to be in the realm. And as those drivers make their stop into pit road, drop past seeing the start finish line, it's going to be your new leaders. It's Cedric Hunt. It's going to be Vincent Sora and Nick Crawford. They're going to be those front runners. Danny Cochran in third and Cedric Hunter in fourth. As the drivers have cycled their way through, John Forbes has fallen back to fifth. Ali Fonseca, first driver to hit pit road, back in sixth position. I gotta say, with how early Ali pitted, this is an excellent spot for himself to be, but again, haven't talked about Joshua Kanata a lot, and I think he prefers that at moments with the way that Mike Hunter's curse has been uh, firing off these last couple of weeks, but 16, seventh place, not a bad place to be late into this run. It definitely is not a bad spot. And I looked at him in practice, and I felt like the 16 was a driver to watch out for. Kanata just seems like a sneaky driver, and he definitely, uh, these mile and a half more momentum base tracks, like, really suit the 16 for sure in his style. So good to see him having a great run. He got Christopher Norshay right behind him, but look at Campbell. He's trying to come through, and he's on a little bit fresher tires than the likes of these two around him, and Campbell going to make the pass there on Christopher Norshay. Makes the pass and move up to eighth place as Kanata's trying to figure out how to set up the 24 of Oli Fonseca to move up into the sixth place position as they continue to race back and forth between the field. We're about to be marching into the final third of tonight's race as we're getting closer to lap 100. Again, thank you so much to everyone that's joining with us here tonight on Freaky Fast Podcast. And we appreciate all of those that have already liked or have subscribed to our YouTube channel. And uh, if you haven't already learned about the clipping tool, if there's a moment in the race that you thought, hey, that's a cool moment that I want to remember, there is a clipping tool. It's your scissors but, uh, icon. You can press on that and it allows you to make a clip a minute up to a minute in length of a spot in our broadcast that we also, uh, once you make that clip, we can go on our, our end, take that clip, maybe we can post it on our shorts on YouTube Shorts or on TikTok. So we appreciate all those that have already used the clipping tool, but if you haven't learned about it yet, why not give it a try as Vincent Sora leads the charge, Nick Crawford in second at the moment, and Zach officially 100 laps in the books, but still the longest segment of it all, 50 laps to go. Man, oh man, this has been a good battle between these two. And don't count out Danny Cochran. He's only about a second back. yet. Cedric Hunter. He's worked his way two seconds with him. He's got John Forbes with him. That top five is still close enough to where we could see lots of change up here, folks. And we still got a long way to go before they pit, too. In my, in my opinion, you're probably going to start seeing those pit stops around anywhere 115 all the way to 125. So... We'll see when the likes of these drivers do it, but I'm thinking 115 is going to be that money stop. Now, let's see a couple of drivers march at 110. I, think, I like that call from you at 115, 120. That is a good window for these drivers. You're going to have enough time to use as much tire wear as you want without really feeling like you need to conserve. And also put you in a spot where if there is a late caution, the majority of the field still has a set of tires to work with in their back pocket. But I'm looking at a couple of other drivers. There's some in the field that have already used three sets of tires. You've got just one left here tonight, and that's the tricky spot of using a set of tires in your first stage as we get to this portion of the race where you are kind of stuck in your box. So well, I want to push the fuel later on in the race. So I've got precious tires just in case we get a late caution when we pit sooner and bang on this race staying green. That is always the predicament as we look back at the weather to see how that's all shaping up there in the bottom right of your screen. but. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be very interesting to see how it all shapes up here if you have one set of tires left in your pit stall. You know, that is going to make a lot of drivers worry that are in that position. I believe Nick Crawford is going to be one of those. Justin Campbell, Lee Fonseca sits in that same boat. So there are going to be in, uh, some interesting decisions to be made, Sam, because you don't want to take that last set too early because if your caution comes out, you're a sitting duck, folks. You certainly can be a sitting duck and you've seen tire wear influence some of these races this season already. That's Casey Cassidy is catching up to Christopher Norris. Also seen Olive and Sega, Joshua Kanata, all these drivers battling back and forth. This is all the action from seventh back to ninth place. It's going back to tenth place is on screen. And all the drivers are trying to make their way forward. The Ted machine of Jared Talmadge back in 13th position. And 
no steal on 12th. These drivers are having a great battle between the two of them, but I'd imagine they wish they were a little bit further up on the grid currently. That they do, you know, these two here definitely want to be farther up. And if you're Talmud, you're going to be pushing so hard here because he stayed out so much longer than anybody. He's got about nine laps on most of these guys when it comes to tires. So he's going to be really charging through in that 10 machine as he gets closer to the 3, the 38, the 17. And really where he's at, he still has a shot and an opportunity, in my opinion, to drive all the way up to 6 with those tires. Well, for those that are just joining us here tonight, welcome to Freaky Fast Broadcasting. If it's your first time, you're watching the ISRC Lara Productions Truck Series. The drivers here this evening are in our sixth season. It's race eight, the Bobby Gill Rawl 150. And if you're looking in chat, I'd be wondering, well, what's the pin of the link? That is the GoFundMe link to go support Bobby Gill, who's currently recovering after chemotherapy and uh, dealing with all of the rehab and recovery uh, of his illness and that's ways to help the family and support medic uh, support financially to help with their medical uh, finances and we really appreciate everyone that's just sharing the link or is able to financially support as the drivers continue to race here tonight it's vincent sora leading the charge nick crawford in second if we take a look at our race report it was a very climatic start to the race we've had a total of three cautions all three, uh, we have two that happened during our stage break, and then our third caution was the stage break yellow. We've been cleaning green since then. But Zach, if we look at how this race has been going so far this season, uh, all the races kind of get to this point, and then the last 20 laps, the race kind of falls apart with a lot of late cautions. It usually does. That's exactly how the trends have been this season, and we'll see if it continues to be that way. We just had actually a position change for our podium spots. It looks like, as you see, Tom is actually going to pass there. I believe that's on green, but that's not for position as he gets closer to Fonseca. But we had Cedric Hunter pass his teammate at Danny Cochran to move up to third. And Hunter right now turning the fastest laps of that grouping up there along with John Forbes. He's got it underneath two seconds now. Cedric Hunter might be Vincent Sora's next challenger in this last run. As you can see, also on screen, uh, Hunter Talmadge trying to get by Ola Fonseca Fonseca again on the oldest set of tires of anyone on track with the first hit pit road. Most likely going to be the first hit pit road here for the final stop. Money stop right around the corner. We've just entered the window uh, from here on out, expecting everyone to make their final stop of the day. But with Cedric Hunter, Danny Cochran, and, and John Forbes talking about John Forbes and Cedric Hunter. There's Zach. I mean, they're moving forward. They've got just one to two laps fresher tires than their front two. But it's crazy to see how much of an advantage that is. But if you look at the gap, still two seconds or more back from our leader uh, of Vincent Sora and Nick Crawford. About three laps ago, he was quicker in that seven. Same with Forbes. But these last two have just kind of fell off a little bit here. So maybe just overheated the tires just a little bit. You see Vincent Sora getting a little bit of draft and driving through some of that traffic. That's doing a good job. Looks like he got past Ethan Smith, I believe, in the 99, who's uh, just been put a lot down. But, yeah, Vincent Sora in a definite interesting uh, position here is Nick Crawford about eight tenths still back here. Said to Connor staying at a steady two seconds. So pretty stable right now. First driver to hit pit road for the money stop, John Forbes. And the 11 machine has just entered pit road. There was no signs over the radio that he was going to make that stop quiet. Stealthy stop for the 11. And this early of a run, I mean, this is right inside of that window we were kind of talking about of when you want to make that final stop of the day. A little bit sooner than some would like, but for John Forbes, he can make the early stop because he's still got an extra pit. He's still got an extra set of tires and pit road to work with as Nick Crawford follows suit just a lap after. I like the call to follow suit there with Nick Crawford. Two teammates now with the gapping they had should come out pretty evenly together and Forbes might just be able to latch on to the fresher tires of Crawford and just let him tow him around. So very good decision here. This could work out well. What does Vincent Sword do? Does he react or does he continue on? Looks like he will react and come to pit road this time. Looks like Cedric Hunter from the third position or second position is going to come down too. He's sliding sideways as he comes into pit road. Danny Cochran though going to stay out in the two machine. You cannot afford to make a mistake. Big slide by Cedric Hunter, but he was trying to gain any spots that he could or gain on the gap. 
for that lead position by a very quick pit entry. But all drivers are seeing that there. Hopping back onto the track can be tricky for some, but you cannot afford to get a black flag. That's speeding into pit road, unsafe pit entry, uh, unsafe pit exit, speeding at any moment while you're in pit road, sliding through your box. Those are mistakes you cannot afford this crucially late into a run as Danny Cochran hits pit road. Noah Steele makes his stop to enter pit road. It leaves us with the nine of Justin Campbell leading the way as the laps continue to clock down. This is going to be very wild to see now. Where is this all going to shake out? You see Vince or you see Cedric Hunter. I believe Nick Crawford, John Forbes both jump way ahead of Vince Sora. Vince Sora, in my opinion, lost a good portion of time to those stops. And this is going to be a wild ending. As about four drivers enter pit row, that's going to be Campbell. Oh, hitting the walls, GT Rosari further on a back. Just a slight graze, and he was coming in so hot and heavy. I thought he was going to hit the barrels for a quick second. Luckily, he stays away from barrels. He'll continue to be able to race on. But the drivers that have made their stops already, leading the charges, Nick Crawford, John Forbes, and Vincent Sora. Mired back over a second and a half, almost two seconds away from Nick Crawford. That is a gap you can work with, especially on just having a one lap difference in tires between Crawford and Sora. That it is, and if anything, you look at this, Cedric Hunter gained a lot of time on Vincent Sora on that entry of pit road. So that uh, slide he had, he got about a second of Vincent Sora, who now is going to have to dive to the inside of Thomas. That's going to slow him up a little bit there too. So again, Vincent Sora getting held up. Nick Crawford with the likes of his teammate John Forbes behind him. That makes a little bit of a, a wall there for Nick Crawford. That's going to help his case here coming down to the end of this race. For these drivers, for Cedric Hunter, he's trying to get by the 10 machine that would enable the sub to get back onto the lead lap. But for all these drivers, they're running against one another and they have to really think big picture. Well, there's about four to five drivers. They're going to stay out as long as possible. Most likely going to stay out until about six laps to go because they've got the fuel to get that long into a run. They don't have the fuel to make it to the end of the race. But you know, at this point, what if well gamble on staying out if you're one of those drivers that weren't able to make it to turn this race into a one stop? I completely agree. I think the only person that should deviate from it is probably the likes of the 10 of Jared Talmadge as we look to the 13 here of uh, Travis Evers. You see flashing up to the top right. Vincent Sora, fastest lap of the race is John Forbes has actually took the positioning from Nick Crawford. So Nick Crawford giving up the spot as it looks like Vincent Sora pushing hard to catch up to that group. And I'm kind of shocked by that give up by Nick Crawford. Crawford's got the one lap advantage over John Forbes and tires. I'm curious if Crawford's maybe thinking, okay, I've got the, the tires to work with here. I know it's a one lap difference compared to myself and Vincent Sora, maybe thinking about playing a little bit of defensive blocking for the 11 machine. For Sora and, and John and John Forbes' battle to continue on as Ethan Smith has a slight wiggle with Thordak and as you see Forbes, Crawford slot, slicing and dicing their way through the slower vehicles. Well, I'm watching lap times. Vincent Sora is saving nothing. So we'll see if that hurts or doesn't even hinder him at all because he is definitely catching up to these two right here and when he gets there he's going to want to make quick work because he doesn't want to have to ride side by side for multiple laps that's just going to hurt the tires and i think that's why you're seeing vincent push so hard he knows he has an advantage right now but i think crawford he did this in the championship race if you look back at it he let trenton jump and ali fonseca race super hard together let them burn their stuff up and he was the one that was the victor late in the race and really took hold of when they got to racing hard. So maybe he's looking to play that same cat and mouse game again. I mean, but how long can you really play that cat and mouse game knowing that Vincent Sora, who looms directly behind you now, is just waiting for one pounce. I mean, he's for Vincent Sora, he still has over 25 laps to work with to try to get past the both of you of the 11 and 74. But if you make a wall, might as well be able to defend. But this feels like a little counterintuitive for both of these drivers staying side by side. It really is. This has slowed them up a ton. This has personally killed their strategy, in my opinion, by being side by side, swapping positions. They they needed to keep the 74 out front with the fresher tires and keep the pace up because now Vincent Sora, he's here. And if they don't have no tire advantage to, to you know, or saved enough here to fight him off, he's going to have easy picking on them. 
here we go. Pit cycle still hasn't completely cycled all the way through, but this is what we're expecting to be the battle for the win between Nick Crawford, John Forbes, Cedric Hunter as they're closing in on the back bumper of the 26 machine on our ticker, 28 on track. The Brennan Maddox, Maddox will stay high. Let's the, what should be the leaders drive on by. This is the battle for third on our ticker, but still waiting on Mark Morales and Jared Talmadge. They still need to make their final stop. And once again, the teammates are back at it side by side. And I would say Zach, Vincent Sora has kind of loomed into that position that John Fortress was at back in season four when Crawford won the race as they'll duck down below Mark Morales trying to make the pass for second. And that little bit of a deking move, a little bit nerve wracking, but they made it through. Yeah, they did. They made it for that moment. And now Vincent Sora, since he's caught up to him, he's kind of relaxed in this position. He's no longer looked as aggressive with his, you know, his corner speed. I think right now, trying to make sure to have something here late to battle doesn't want to go out here and just use everything up he's now in the draft he's just going to ride here for a little bit so drivers continue to race on driving yet to pit still is your talmage you need to come to pit road here in the next stop looking to be about five to ten laps for the 10 machine other drivers that also are going to be needing to make a pit stop is mark morales back in fifth position uh, also, going to be Brandon Maddox who just came to the radio saying the 26 is going to be making his stop as the battle for second continues to loom. Mark Morales still out on track for another lap, and the 91 could stay out a little bit later than the 10 machine of Talmadge. But the battle for second position is back underway as Vincent Sora, first sign of trying to make a pass for over John Forbes, didn't work, but he'll try the inside this go around into three. Looking to the inside, and we'll see what the grip is. Look at how much speed he carries on entry, but he's got the slide up, and Forbes backed it up enough to where he put it on the quarter panel, and this is what Crawford wants to see. John, do everything you do to play the quarter panel games. Pull him back. Make him work for it, because if he makes the easy pass on him, it just makes that much easier for him to get around Crawford without having to overwork those tires. The battle between the past champions. You got Nick Crawford, the season four champion, the season five champion of John Forbes, the season one champion of Vincent Sora, putting on a masterclass here at Charlotte of who's gonna find themselves in victory lane as you're right on board the 15 of Vincent Sora, just waiting and looming, has the slight tire advantage, but as this run progresses forward, I mean, Zach, at some point, the advantage isn't gonna exist anymore exactly right i you know he's got to get something done i don't i'm it's so confusing sometimes because you think these guys are going to go out here and use the advantage up and be able to make the pass quickly or you know is he planning something here? we'll just have to see as you can see how much speed carries right to the back bumper i think he knows when he gets to forwards he's got to clear him. he cannot allow forwards to get back to the quarterback not able to make the pass just yet but continue to show signs the outside move, the inside move, where you want to loom as we're marching the 20 laps to go. It's a couple of small battles still going on throughout the field, but it's really this grouping of three as Sora to the quarter panel, down into turn number three, trying to make another slide job move, if possible. They're also going to have a slight lap trap in front of them. It's going to be Brandon Maddox, who's on fresher tires, expecting to see that 28 machine kind of pull away from this group of three that dirty air that's going to be hurting Nick Crawford the most on this charge as the battling between the 11 and the 15 slight wiggle in the entry Sora keeps it straight for now as they exit at turn number two and it's old caution's Caution. out and it's the nine of Justin Campbell involved and there's that late yellow that everyone thought was going to come out oh man this one's going to be a little bit of a, a mistake from the nine I think here just Duff clearing himself onto the nose of the 91 of Morales. And a little bit of a, a hiccup there, as they would say, in driving and just completely, I think, lost track of the clear call there and put himself head first in the wall. Not a great move. That happens to this 9 machine. The game is closing in. But Mark Morales in the 91. Again, Morales was out there on course. The 91 machine was still in a spot where he was on very much very older tires than the rest of the field as the nine machine loses in on the green pink and white machine and was going to duck it down low and then zach i mean like you said just still spinning after trying to come up clips himself off the nose of the 91 and morales was running his own lane 
the nine just went over aggressive on the entry of the corner. Yeah, he just tried to open it up too much, man. That's, you know, he was waiting for the clear call. I, I, he clearly never got it because you know, the contact was made there. But, yeah, just a, a big mistake there from Campbell, who uh, now major damage on the nose. And, again, one of these late yellows. This has set things up. And Nick Crawford now, he's in the bed of he has no tires. Same for Ali Ponseca. Same for Noah Steele, I believe. Mason Cassidy is the likes of that, too. So, those drivers, huge loss with that yellow for them. Huge loss for themselves as checking on, on drivers with their pit stops. It's going to be advantage going to Jared Talmadge. Banked on a yellow, got the yellow. The track position for the 10. It will be in fifth place. John Force will fall back to six. Vincent Sora, seven. Looking at the field, everyone that had tires taking four. No one willing to gamble to take just two as wait for those pace car lights to click off. But like you said, top four drivers, they ran out of sets of tires. They needed the race to stay clean and green. It doesn't. And now the sitting ducks is Nick Crawford, Olive and Seca, Noah Steele, Mason Cassidy, as they'll have to watch the roaring drivers behind, ready to take off and just blast by them. That's why the gamble of, you know, taking those tires in that first stage, it's such a risk. It is such an advantage as you see what the drivers did with them. But it's such a risk now because it puts you in a vulnerable spot like this where if we get yellows in this race and, you know, the, the fuel strategy works out a different way where you got to pit a two-stop strategy, you're going to be out of tires if you if you take tires. So it is uh, put these guys in a tough spot, and now they're just going to have to just hang on for dear life, so to say. There's also a few other drivers deeper in the field that are going to be not having tires to come into pit road to grab. Uh, Tyler Dangler not able to come into pit road to get service done. Eric Krolik going with the wave around, uh, not going to be able to come into pit road to use his set. But the drivers are taking the wave around. Uh, those drivers to look out for. Tyler Dangler, Aaron Krolik, Travis Everett, Joshua Freed, and Samuel Garcia trying to get back onto the lead lap. That will give us 23 drivers on the lead lap for this next run. And... Like we've seen the last couple of weeks, once again, late caution. Drivers that we thought were our favorites to watch out for, they may not have to, may not be the favorites coming to the end of this run here when we get to that white flag and checkered at the end of the night. I tell you what, I think the favorite right now has got to be the driver that's going to be the most aggressive. I think you look at John Forbes again in the 11. I think he's one of the best, him and Vince Sora, along with Danny Cocker, and those three, the slice and dice through the field, those are going to be the ones I think you got to watch for here late and it's going to get real, real aggressive here, Sam. Well, if you haven't already, we would love it. If you're enjoying the broadcast, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, might as well. We've got some great, great, great racing coverage throughout the week. We cover four different series here on Tricky Fast Broadcasting. We have tonight uh, on Mondays, the ISRC Cup uh, Truck Series, excuse me, and then on Tuesdays, uh, here we're expecting to be giving you the coverage of the championship race of the brb cup series on tuesdays this upcoming wednesday championship race do not want to miss it wssr having their final race of the season who will grab the season eight championship trophy there are still all six drivers mathematically have a chance to win the championship then thursday we're back after a two-week break it's the Shoney's Doghouse Cup Series back to racing coverage. We're excited to see Thursday night back. Uh, but what a schedule we have for throughout the week here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting. Again, we would love if you would subscribe. And when you do, hit that bell notification so you're notified when, when we are live. Hit the like button. And why not share the broadcast? This may not be our final restart of the night. So who's going to grab the win? Zach, any final thoughts before we get back to Greek flag racing? It not being our final restart. You're probably pretty right about that, Sam. We might see some carnage here, but we'll see how the old tires can hang on. I think they will launch through one and two, but I think when we get down to three and four, you're going to start to see those tires really show their age. Top four, going to be on those older tires. Nick Crawford, Oliver Sika, Noah Steele, Mason Cassidy. Everyone in the third row on back has the fresh rubber that they just put on, expecting to have a massive surge to go forward 
Ace car pulls into pit road. It's the Bobby Gill Brawl 150. We're back to green flag action. Crawford gets going. The inside row doesn't really take off as well as they were hoping for. The outside doesn't go at all. They're bumping and shoving down into turn number one. And Crawford's the one driver away. There are going to be three wide into turn number one. John Ford sends it to the outside row. But off of two, hold your breath. Here we go, Zach. Oh, man, Forbes jumps up to the top of Ali Fonseca. It's going to be three wide. Vincent Sora there also along with him. But how can these front three hang on? Because Crawford's running away. But this is not going to last for long. Three wide, and oh, Talmadge gets clipped by Noah Steele. He'll whistle up forward. Cedric Carter gets sent to the inside grass, holding the brake, coming back in front of the field. They'll keep it straight for now. Side by side for second position. Hunter will be go from eighth place, only back to 25th position. Crawford's got the lead, but Sora with the fresh rubbers up to second. Ollie, also Talmadge in the outside wall. There'll be four white scattering across, down into turn number three. Somehow we keep it all together, but the battle for the lead's underway. Sora is gone and dusted. Who's going to catch him? John Forbes is too far back. Oh, man, what a launch from John. Oh, no, oh, no. no. Cassidy into the outside wall. Ollie Fonseca, Smith, and others. They continue to pile in. Down into turn number three. Drivers are still clobbering into one another. And the late caution sets us up for a less than 10 laps to go restart. Well, we said uh, it was likely we get another restart. Here it comes, folks. Is you're going to get to see mayhem <laughs> pretty much play out here off of turn number four. Is really some of these drivers farther up who got into it, and Tyler Dingler going to later get involved with this group. As you can see, this grouping of cars here coming up into it, but it was all right there at the beginning of the trial, Sam. Yeah, it was uh, looked to be Mason Cassidy getting slotted into the outside wall as the 99 and the 20 clip off the exit of the corner. Cassidy hits the wall, and then they continue to scatter. After that, more drivers start to pile in. Everyone's trying to go down in the grass to avoid the wreck. Smith just continues to beat and bang. And then you see Everett slamming in the rear bumper of seeing uh, Tyler Dangler, as well as I believe that's the 50 of Gonzalez getting clobbered. It just continues to fall away late in this race. Drivers that were hoping for a caution get involved with the caution. That they did, Sam. Uh, right on board here with Tyler Dingler. See how it looked from his side of the, the race truck? Is, uh, he's going to see exactly uh, not much of it happening, but right here he knows. And he's gotten he's gotten slowed down, but like I said, the 13 of Everett runs in the back of him, but 50 of Garcia's running in the back of Everett. So kind of just a stack up there between the three trucks. Late incidents is blowing up here as the field's going to be less than 10 laps to go. We got a couple of green flag runs there, and I think for drivers, this is that awkward spot. If you've already entered pit road and if have a set left, do you take a final set here, or do you just stick with the track position that you have right now? That's a, that's a huge question to be asked, Sam. I, you know, track position is something you always... You know you want to have but i mean if, if you're farther back and you do have extra set i mean you're gonna have to definitely come down using i don't know how many drivers are gonna still have that set but it seems uh if you're nick crawford i think this really helps the likes of him still you know firing off because anytime you get to cool these tires down for the old tires up front it's gonna really help them for launching here and we're taking green flag laps away we're taking green flag laps away and also for Vincent Sora, he's going to have a buffer to work with because he's going to be able to choose the inside row, which is going to be forcing there to be a wall of Nick Crawford, Noah Steele on 20 plus old tires compared to uh, the rest of the field. It's going to be on seven to six lap old tires of green flag race. So there's going to be a massive difference, which is going to be boxing in John Forbes, Danny Cochran, Christopher Norris, Joshua Kanata, all going to be stuck where they're at. But, man, if we look outside of our top seven, look at the grouping of drivers we have there. Eighth place, Martin Morales Jr., Anthony Gaudio in ninth. Ali Fonseca is back in the mix, but Ollie's on extremely old tires. He's most likely going to fall backwards as well, which leaves GT. Or could it be the uh, that of Jared Talmadge, who got shuffled all the way to the back, uh, be able to get back into the top ten? It's going to be interesting to see who can make their climb back up. I mean, 
This really helps the likes of like Cedric Hunter. You know, he's spun around there in the grass. That's going to help him. He's restarting back in 15th, and it gets him back up here. But, uh, you know, again, we could very well see some more yellow flags here still. This this is, like we said, been a trend here lately. A lot of drivers, we heard them very vocal about it last week in the interviews. And just, you know, not a, a lot of happy drivers after that one. We could see uh, some interviews like that tonight. Or we could see a few guys that talk to that kind of going we'll to be happy that they got out of here with the finish that they didn't expect. From. Some elation, others going to be hoping for a new day. And speaking of, of a new day, we got three more races left in the regular season. Next week, the drivers head to Pocono. The week after, they head to Road Course Racing at Lime Rock Park Grand Prix. Going to be April 22nd. Don't want to miss that. Last time those drivers ran there, Vincent Sora took the win, but that was all the way back in Season 1. Haven't ran since Season 1. We'll see if there's any differences in Season 6. And then finishing off the regular season, the drivers head Probably the most chaotic, most drama-filled racetrack besides short tracks, Las Vegas. The last race of the regular season before we set up our 16 drivers that will race in the playoffs. A lot of history in the next three races, but first we've got to get done with tonight. Vincent Sora, Nick Crawford. It's going to be nine laps to go when we go green. But Zach, we let that caution around laps six to go, five to go, or anything less than that. We're heading overtime. That we will be, Sam. And we know what happens when overtime comes out it is uh pretty much go f don't lift is what we've seen a lot of times and it's turned out you know good for some drivers and not turned out well for others so we'll see how this restart goes here we got a decent little run here down to the end uh, this allows the likes of john forbes he really liked this caution because he saw Vince sort of get past the guys and it was going to be set sail for him but now he's got a chance to get quickly around his teammate and noah still and have a shot in his 15th state Drive stack, yeah, but get ready to go. Also, a new driver going to be heading to the garage. That's Brennan Maddox, who is calling it a night. Brennan, uh, not the debut race he was hoping for, but he'll get set up and prepared for tomorrow night as he's got BRB Cup Series action for himself to run. As uh, we hope to, to see you next week, Brennan, at Pocono. But up front, Vincent Sora going to be in the freshest tires. Old tires give it to Nick Crawford and Noah Steele. John Forbes, as well as going to be seeing Christopher Norris, Danny Cochran. Who's going to have the better launch into the restart zone? The Bobby Grill, a uh, Gill, Crawl 150 is that underway. Sora's gone. A little bit of shuffling of where you want to go between the rest of the field, but it's all the 15 for now. And go, oh boy, still almost getting up into the 11. Ooh, that was very close there, Sam. That was, I think that was contact there for a moment between Steele and the 11 of Forbes. But you see Steele and Crawford able to fire off pretty well through down the back straightaway. But I think here in three and four, you're going to start to see those tires start to show their age. And look at John Forbes, the grip of all time going around the top. And I think he's going to have Christopher Norris trying to follow the 38, who's been showing up here late. How did Danny Cochran, Norris, and Steele get through three and four? I'll never know, but they somehow do. Two by two all the way through from second on back. Crawford hoping to just survive. Same is gonna be said for Noah Steele and all of Fonseca deeper in the field, but up front is Vincent Sora, John Force, Christopher Norris. Who's gonna have the better run between these drivers? It's two Snowy Desert racing drivers, two Cochran Sora racing drivers, your top four with only seven laps to go here at Charlotte as they continue to squeeze in closer. Drivers from the run back, getting side by side as Crawford continues to fall back. Same for Noah Steele, fastest lap goes to John Forbes of the whole entire race and Forbes is right on the back bumper of the 15. This is gonna be a brawl, Sam. Uh, and the draft is so powerful. The tires are so new. They can almost hold these things wide open. This is going to be pretty much a straight up race here between this top group. If we stay green, it's going to be side by side here quickly. I know we're not at a short track, but we've seen the bumpers already be used here tonight. Hasn't wrecked anyone fully, but it's John Force willing to use the outside lane. Going to be trying to get a better better run and momentum onto the back stretch. Not able to get the run that he was really hoping for. They're still slashing and dashing back in 15th place before the lead. Forbes tries to use even the wall. Sora trying to use the dirty air to hold back the 11, and it's just allowing there's no Christopher Norris and David Conqueror to get back in the mix. Five laps to go here tonight. If we get a caution, we're going to overtime, and Forbes is willing to use the bumper. 
Oh, he's definitely will use the bumper. We've seen it done before, and Forbes is one of the most aggressive out there. Throw Christopher Norris and Danny Cochran right in the pot, and you never know if you're Joshua Kanata and Martin Morales, you could be sitting in the perfect spot right now. Morales and Kanata licking their lips, wanting to see the chaos of the front runners that have been the favorites for the majority of the night. Sora and Forbes, four laps to go. And once again, bumper to bumper into turn number one and forcing Forbes up into the wall. Sora with a little bit of a late block there, but gonna be, would have been a little bit of more of a pinch on the 11 and Forbes once again, willing to bump draft into three. Oh man, this is gonna come push, come to shove here down into three and four guys. As Sora is just throwing every single block he can, and Forbes is moving the groove up higher and higher each and every corner. At some point, they're gonna meet the wall. That is giving some shade. Season two, ISRC. Think back to Homestead. It was the front two drivers that wiped each other out. It was the third place runner of that time. So Cedric Hunter that was able to be gifted the win. Christopher Norris and Danny Cochran, they're loving this action up front because the front two most likely are going to wreck each other with three laps to go. Forbes continues to put the bump, but the 11 might wreck himself before he has a chance for the lead. Oh man, the 11 lost a big ton of momentum here. Here comes his teammate, Christopher Norris. Vincent Sora can take a deep breath right here. He's going to see two laps to go here in Charlotte. Can he hold on? Two laps to go, and now Danny Cochran's going to be putting the pressure on Christopher Norris, not allowing the 38 to really have to run to utilize his tires that he has been saving. John Forbes, it's all on the 11. He has to get clear of the two if he wants a chance to fight at Vincent Sora. Sora's loving the battle. It's two tenths in the three and four, and Vincent Sora's just seeing the drivers utilize every lane possible with the 15 off the exit of turn four. Give you the freaky fast white flag. We didn't need overtime. Sora, two tenths over the battle for second. Oh, man, he fought so hard, Sam. He manipulated the draft here. He's got his teammate at Cocker now making the pass on Forbes. He's just got to have a clean exit off a of two, get into three and four, and he should have this. Danny Cochran playing a little bit of gunner, trying to hold back the 11 of John Forbes. Forbes sends it low for second place, but no one's going to touch the 15. Vincent Sora off the four, giving back the crown of the most wins this season as Mar Morales wrecks behind the 15. will win here at Charlotte. Oh, man, what a battle. That was a brawl, guys. I knew we were going to see the elbows get out, and they definitely were out for that final run. Well, the name of the track was the Bob, was the Bobby Gill Brawl 150, and we saw it there. Vincent Sora held off every fight, put the pinch on John Forbes, and Forbes tried everything possible. Just one slip up late in the race was just was too much to recover from. And Danny Cochran, great teamwork racing, holding back the 11 when it was necessary, enabling our season one champ to now get his third win of the season what a job by vincent soros he's gonna burn it down here like you said on the front straightaway and hey he's winning on every type of track so far i mean this is uh it's looking good for the 15s return and he's showing he has not left the beat and really he was one of the most dominant drivers we've seen and he's starting to show back up as that driver again you talked about the two most aggressive drivers. How were they going to run there at the end? Well, they gave us a show with nine laps to go here tonight. But for us, we're going to step away. When we come back, we'll talk to our top three in a spotlight driver, get their thoughts on this evening's race. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Freaky Fast Podcasting Post Race Show. Tonight, the drivers of the ISRC Larry R. Productions Truck Series put on a show late. Another late caution that's put us in some drama racing action at the end as the Bobby Gill Brawl 150 lived up to the name of Brawl for that first place position. Even to the 15 of Vincent Sora, able to hold on with every fight that we saw from John Forbes. So the 15 takes the crown of the most wins so far this season at three as we head to victory lane. Vinny, it's Sam and Zach up in the booth. Congratulations on your third win. How are you feeling after that late brawl between yourself and John Forbes? Oh, dude, I feel so good. I've had horrendous luck since my last win, which was at Richmond. I feel like every week. After then, I've had race winning speed and we get some yellows at the end or something happens and I just get shuffled back and wrecked and just uh, I have nothing to show for the speed that I have. And so far this year, whenever I don't get wrecked or have something unfortunate happen, I win the race. And I feel like I've had race winning uh, race winning speed every single week. And I finally put one together here tonight. I didn't think after that lousy pit call that we made before the stage that I was going to have any chance of doing anything for the rest of the race because I was going to be mired back in traffic. But, yeah, I just drove up through there, and I didn't want to lose this one tonight. I was I was hungry for a win, and I've just been searching and knocking on the door since Richmond, and I really wanted this one, and I wasn't going to be denied. That's your word, Vinny. I tell you what, man, great drive, great win. And, you know, my biggest question is, you know, those last five, ten laps there, how much driving, how much percentage of driving was out the windshield and how much was in the mirror? Oh, I – I actually, with about two to go, I ran. I just thought to myself, I was like, dude, I haven't even seen out my windshield for the last like three laps. I was just straight up mirror driving, throwing haymaker blocks. I appreciate racing somebody like John, who I know can always, you know, drive clean and not wreck me for stuff like that. Because honestly, I would probably put the bumper to myself if I was in John's shoes, but he didn't. He had, he probably had the opportunity to, and I knew he would, but yeah, John's a great guy. He races super hard and super clean all the time. And, uh yeah just throwing those blocks was so fun and so glad to be able to race with somebody and not get wrecked for it i mean Vinny, we, we kind of are stepping away from those short track racing that, that we just had for the past four weeks with tonight you showed how dominant you are at these bigger courses what is the confidence level knowing we got three more races left in the regular season before the playoffs are right around the corner well i need points to go get the regular season championship because i i had to miss a race at legacy phoenix and then like i said i just had bad luck since and tonight was the points that i needed i wish john could have been maybe a few spots back or not beat me in the stage there but uh yeah the next three races i think is pocono lime rock and vegas and they're statistically great tracks for me uh, except for the ending of vegas in season one but speed wise i have a uh, really good speed there hoping lime rock can be a w for me and pocono i got it last time so we'll see uh, i didn't put in any practice this week because i was pretty busy i might practice for the next next few here and see what i can do and hopefully get some more wins in the regular season trophy oh well, we can't wait to see how well you run there Vinny. before we let you go the floor is now yours for any shout outs yeah first off john forbes for racing me super hard appreciate you for not wrecking me uh i'm sure i'll see him next week and we'll race just as hard like we do every week I uh, appreciate you guys for broadcasting, everybody in the league, uh, all my teammates at CSR, Danny Cochran, and Cedric Hunter, and everybody at home watching. That'll be your winner here tonight for the Boppy Gill Brawl 150 at Charlotte. Vincent Soar in the 15, his third win of the season. He's got a couple of more he wants to grab for himself. Congratulations, Vinny, on the win, and good luck next week at Pocono. Thanks, boys. Have a good one. You too. As we move from po from the <laughs> victory lane you know, over to second place, where we've got the two machine of Danny Cochran, was able to make the passes there late to get into second position. Danny, a lot of work there in those last couple of laps to get from fourth up to second position. How are you feeling, though, after the kind of wacky race this race turned into there late? Yeah, I mean, I, I was counting on it. Um, it's... <laughs> The exact opposite. It's the same situation, just other side of the coin of what we were dealing with last week. Uh, you know that we can't make it a green run without somebody losing talent. That's a given. And we make it to inside 20 to go, and somebody somewhere just has to go, Ugh, and, and junk the thing. Um, 
we played to our advantage this time though where we didn't stop in that in that first run we had that extra set of tires in the bank that we were able to to use their late which was uh really advantageous for us but i mean all in all can't be can't be upset with the p2 tonight definitely a great run danny i mean you know i talked to you earlier this week you said charlotte wasn't you know your greatest track how do you feel like you improved here uh, this time because it seems like definitely a pickup the speed for the two yeah um for sure we've struggled at charlotte in the past or at least i have uh especially on longer run pace i, I felt decent about my long run pace tonight but i mean it <laughs> it still doesn't matter when it just comes down to a lottery at the end there it certainly does seem like it's coming to a lottery late in these races the last couple of weeks but uh danny we got three more races left Pocono, Lime Rock, and then Las Vegas. What's the confidence level, and what are you trying to learn before we go into our playoffs here in just about a month? Yeah, I mean, especially for Lime Rock, you know, just figuring out how to uh, just drive these trucks there. You know, setups have changed a lot since the last time we went to Lime Rock. The trucks have changed a lot since the last time we went to Lime Rock. So I think it's going to be a different race. I still, you know, I expect to be fast at road courses. Uh, I might not be as fast as Vinny or Nick or... Uh, maybe John, but I think we'll have some decent pace there just because it races really similar to some of the other tracks that we go to. Well, Danny, we cannot wait to see how you're going to perform in these next couple of races, but for tonight, the floor is now yours for any shout outs. Yeah, man. Um, Hot Lap Threads, Larry Arts Productions, riding on the trucks every week. Uh, stoked to have them on the podium once again. Vinny, John Norris, that was a really fun battle there toward the end. Had a lot of fun with those guys. John was <laughs> very patient with the 15. Um, Norris, race me race me fantastically it was a lot of fun racing with those guys um outside of that you guys for broadcasting the admins for putting this thing on and all the moms out there rocking two shirts well that will be the two machine of danny cochran helping out his teammate gonna go one two here tonight congratulations on your second place finish danny and good luck next week at pocono thanks guys as we go from second position, we go down to third. We're going to talk to the driver that was in victory lane last week, broke the championship curse. John, congratulations on a third place finish, but you're so close. What else did you need there to find yourself in a victory lane? Yeah, it was. Uh, I was trying so hard to get that runner on the outside and just get him to not defend it one time, and it, it would have probably worked out for us there. The, the clean air was so important, but... Um... On that one lap, I tapped the wall in it, the corner entry, and he got away just enough. Um, but yeah, it was just a fight for the clean air all night. Um, solid performance. Was able to come away with the top three, so can't complain with that. Um, and retain the points lead. So just a solid overall night for us, and uh, we're going to carry that momentum on. You know, John, with those late race yellows we get there with about 20 to go, I mean, how how do you reset your mind from the battle you were having just with your teammate and Vincent Sora to now you're going to have to restart in a little bit of traffic and try to fight through? Yeah, we definitely had to step up the intensity for that. Um, it was crazy, and we knew it was just because the, the four guys out front had no tires, so we knew it. they were going to be just sitting ducks out there. Um, and I think I, I started sixth on that restart, went up to fourth, and then um jared uh, got loose on the outside um got into his bumper i had nowhere to go that put us back down to about 10th or 12th and then came back all the way up to fourth and then the caution came out with a couple laps to go there so we got pretty lucky with that i thought my night was ending a few times on those last 10 laps with that restart so yeah just really happy to escape that um but we just we knew it was going to be be crazy from that point on and it, it seems to always happen it really does. And John, after last week into this week, the point situation looks to be pretty much equal to where it was coming into the night. Still an 18 point buffer between yourself and Vincent Sora. What are you hoping to gain? I know for Vinny, his goal is to go for the regular season championship and I imagine your goal as well. But what are you searching for in speed for these next three races at Pocono, Lime Rock and Las Vegas? Yeah, it's just going to be really important to stay consistent because, I mean, even though Vincent won tonight, um, I think I got him, he got me or I got him by one stage point. So just staying right there in contention um, and, of course, like not getting a mistake. I know Vegas is going to be pretty crazy. I think we got that coming up before the end of the uh, the season here. Um, and then Lime Rock again, we are both really close on at Watkins Glen. So it's just going to be a matter of staying as close as possible. I mean, I'm in the advantage spot right now with an 18-point buffer um so just just trying to keep that manage that um get another win would be awesome or win or two would be awesome 
um, and just keep him out of victory lane too. Just got to keep the consistency up and uh, just uh, keep finishing a little bit better than him to keep on uh, rolling with the points lead. Sounds like a solid plan. Well, John, before we officially let you go, the floor is now yours for any shout outs. Yeah, I just want to thank JD Performance Mods, um, Eflex Feel, Strike On Designs, and uh, you guys for putting this on. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for giving us a great show to cover, especially here tonight. That was a fun last nine laps. That'll be your third place finisher in the 11 machine, John Forbes. Congratulations, John, and good luck next week at Pocono. Have a good night. You too. As we move from third place, we go down to fourth. We find ourselves with the 38 of Christopher Norris. Norris, I know you've been messaging us every week, wanting to be our spotlight driver. Here you are now, fourth place. Part of the great duel, four drivers all wanting that lead spot. How are you feeling after being involved with that and not being involved with the wreck up front? Yeah, I'm pretty glad I made it through the field because that race definitely was not going well for me. Um, I was kind of on the defense there, even though I may have should have been on the offense, I guess. Um, I just kind of didn't feel like I had the chance to pass John and Vincent. So, you know, I just told John, I was like, no pressure behind. I'll hold off Danny if I can. And that's really the best I could have done. Um, I definitely thought third or fourth as well as going to, you know, finish and solidify me into a good spot. And that's what I ended up as. So um, I was trying to hope I could get a better finish for John than second or first. Hopefully he would get the win, but unfortunately did not get there. Um, and almost tried to beat him to the line to get that third spot because I really wanted that interview because Danny passed me. But hey, the fourth is still pretty good. Definitely still pretty good, Christopher. So congrats on fourth. Um, you know, Heading into these final three regular season races of Pocono, Lime Rock, Las Vegas, what do you think you need to clean up heading into those playoffs to make sure that 38 is on top of things? Um, Probably just practice. I mean, I haven't been practicing as much as I was last season. And honestly, through that race, I was thinking, man, like, man, I am washed. But I was thinking, what is the one thing I'm not doing this season comparative to the other seasons I have been? And I think that's practice. So I'm thinking maybe just try to find some more time on the weekends and uh, put in at least an, at least an hour for the ovals. Um, I can't get too bun out on them, you know, five hours a week, every week for just the ovals. So I'll give that a shot. Hopefully that helps me out and does well at Pocono. I mean, I've never been really good at Pocono. So I mean, I'm willing to hopefully get some practice hours in and get good there. But Lime Lock is definitely where the practice is going to shine, where I need to spend probably about five hours, which is what I normally do on a road course. I mean, Norris coming into the rest of this regular season, we've got three more races left. What are you hoping, though, for these next three races to learn before entering the playoffs where we've seen you for the last couple of seasons have great success in? Yeah, I mean, last season definitely wasn't great. I mean, we all saw what happened and should it happen again this season. But um, I don't know. I just got to, I guess, try to figure out how to save the tires better because, I mean, tonight definitely wasn't good. I got down to 54% on the right front, which, comparative to my teammates, was not at all good. Um, I've been more focused on my English paper than my race track, which is good for my mom, good for my classes, good for my future, but I want to do good. You know, I want to use some good practice. So, um, definitely need to do better and hopefully I can do that. But honestly, the thing I need to look forward to getting better at is winning. I, this is my second highest finish in this season, second time talking to you guys. So I'm kind of hoping I can do better going throughout the rest of the season. And hopefully getting a win before the playoff starts. Because I mean, I'm locked in based off points. I'm pretty sure it's just skill gap in the season's pretty high or pretty low. I don't know which way to put it. So kind of hoping to get in victory lane before the playoffs. But hey, if we start off the playoffs with a win, that's good too. I'll take the win anytime. Hey, those are solid, solid goals to have for yourself for these final couple of races. Well, Norris, congratulations again on fourth place here tonight. And before we let you go, the floor is now yours. Thank you. So I, of course, I have to shout out my teammates, Nick, uh, Cody, and John. Unfortunately, Nick and Cody had unfortunate strategies and unfortunate races where Cody gets some pretty bad damage. Uh, John, good finish to him. Glad he uh, could, you know, come out on P3 and still leading the points, I'm pretty sure. Um, as well as Tyler for being just like, you know, affiliate teammate, just like we had him, I think, for like two seasons now. So he's just kind of chilling in there. Giving us some insight throughout the field. Uh, Customlids.com, we can get a hat just like the one on my head and also one right in front of me in case my camera's on. Um, and then my fellow admins for, you know, helping us put on the show, penalizing people every week and hopefully not penalizing anyone this week so that we don't have to do anything for that kind of admin meeting. Um, you guys, great show. And also I can't forget two special shout outs to Cody's dad, Lenny Reed. I think he's the goat. So is Cody. So, you know, the goat to Lenny and Cody. And as well as my big fans, big, big fans in season two. 
I heard he's a great guy. And I heard he loves the 38 shot. He just give big shout out to Ollie's grandpa. Big guy, big fan. I'm glad he loves the 38 shot. You know, hopefully he keeps on, you know, pushing me on, giving me some momentum for the further races. Well, great shout outs there, Norris. Congratulations again on fourth place. Enjoy this one and good luck next week at Pocono. Thank you. As we move away from our interviews, we get prepared to take a look at our unofficial results here tonight. Once again, more late race cautions. Thought maybe some drivers had the win in the palm of their hands, and then it just made it a little bit more difficult with these late restarts. But taking the unofficial win here this evening, this third of the season, give it to Vincent Sora in the 15 machine. Danny Cochran, his teammate, going to finish in second. John Forbes, third. Christopher Norris going to finish fourth. Joshua Kanata going to finish in fifth place. Another great finish for the 16. Uh, going to be uh, seeing Jared Talmadge going to be in sixth. And with his finish here tonight, actually going to put him inside the top 25. So a win could bounce. Seeing the 10 machine in the playoffs with the way that the season has progressed. GTRs are going to be in seventh. Eighth, we find Cedric Connor, who really recovered after his big uh, slip up earlier on in the race in late. Uh, ninth goes to Sam Garcia. One of his best finishes of the season. And finishing out the top 10, it's the 39 of Joshua Free. And immediately, as we look through the rest of the order, the thing that goes straight to my eyes is where did the likes of Noah Steele, Nick Crawford, Ali Fonseca fall to? Well, that was all the way back around 18th, 19th, and 20th for those three that were, you know, on those older tires. The strategy just did not work out for them. And others like Cody Reed involved in incidents such as Ethan Smith, too. And just a tough night for a few out there, Charlotte and Sam. But, man, oh, man, I think a few guys are going to be coming back saying, I wish I didn't take that set in that first stage. Yeah, I ain't gonna have to figure out how to you know, settle that in. I know that we got three more races left in the regular season before we start the playoffs and three more chances to find themselves in a victory lane or just maximize on your points to be very crucial for themselves. But tonight, I mean, it was called the Bobby Gill Brawl. And Zach, it lived up to the name of those, that final restart. What an incredible run by Vincent Sora and John Forbes. And you heard it from Vinny. He probably would have wiped himself out. Give big kudos to John Forbes that was trying his best to make a clean pass there late. He played nice. I, you know, and I think if Forbes didn't get into that outside wall, I think he was waiting to use a maneuver with the bumper, but a little bit later. And I think when getting to that wall, it just kind of stop everything from happening for him so i think that kind of stopped the brawl we had but perfect name for the race tonight again shout out to bobby gill um definitely a legend out there and we're all rooting for him for sure in his uh in his time right now and uh i'm sure he, he would definitely be impressed by that battle that we just seen but for sure john Ford showed a lot of restraint that i felt like was gonna be out the window pretty quickly but um you know hey we'll, we'll now know that if, you know, that same game is played to Vincent Sora, what does he do in return to John Forbes? What will we see? The Tricky Triangle going to be our next destination. Going to be a fun one to watch. You don't want to miss out for. Also in chat, uh, if you haven't seen already, check out the pinned uh, comment. That is the GoFundMe to go support Bobby Gill, who is dealing with chemo treatment and recovering from surgery. Uh, we hope the best for Bobby as he's recovering from all of his treatment. As you take a look at our schedule moving forward, and uh, this schedule is not gonna be right after this week because we've got a series come to a conclusion. Tonight is Monday Night ISRC Truck Series. It's been a pleasure to cover. We're getting closer and closer to the playoffs, but tomorrow, still up in the air, we're gonna be covering them or not, but we will be 100% covering the BRB Cup Series next week on Tuesday night. Do not wanna miss out on that action, but tomorrow night, is on the table. We do not know if we're going to be covering them or not, so keep your eyes out on our social medias if we're going to be uh, giving you coverage of the BRB uh, Racing League or not. Wednesday, though, that is a must-not-miss action. The final race of the season. We are crowning a champion. Will it be Benjamin Nelson, who's got the biggest hill to climb to go back-to-back -back in the championship column? 
or will we finally see a new champion across the boards and grab that season eight trophy from Trophy Smack? Don't want to miss out on Wednesday night. Then Thursday, it's the Shoney's Doghouse Cup Series. After taking a two-week break, they're back to racing action on Thursday, our last uh, potential full week of broadcast here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting. And Zach, it's certainly uh, excited to see how WSSR is going to come to a conclusion. And could you be the one hoisting the trophy on Wednesday night? <laughs> I would love to. I mean, that that would be amazing. Um, didn't have a great Charlotte. So we're, we're sitting pretty similar to uh, that, that last season champion, Benjamin Nelson. But anything's possible, man. I mean, we all started dead even at Charlotte last week. I lost 10 points. You never know you can gain 10 points. It's all in the realm of possibility coming down to the end. And Kansas is a track I think people, if, if you aren't busy on Wednesday nights, make sure you tune in because that's probably the best track on the service when it comes to the Gen 4 car. I think we're going to be able to put up quite on the show. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, there's going to be some a very happy driver, and I think we're going to see a new champion for sure. New champion seems to be on the higher scale, but we'll see on Wednesday night again is the WSSR Cup Series season finale this upcoming Wednesday. But for tonight, again, thank you for joining with us. Charlotte gave us the pleasure of a great show. Next week, the drivers try to test their skills at the Tricky Triangle of Pocono. Should be a fun one. But for tonight, again, if you'd like to support Bobby Gill and that family as they're having um, a GoFundMe to help medically support uh, financially support the medical bills of Bobby Gill go down to the GoFundMe and you can support in that fashion uh, financially or you can just share the link to the GoFundMe that also is just as big of a help uh, with Bobby Gill as he's recovering from chemo treatment and the family is dealing through those tough times as for us here tonight for myself Sam Dyer for Zach Hall and Robert Moyer Jr and everyone else at Freaky Fast Broadcasting thank you so much for joining with us on your Monday night it's been a pleasure the drivers gave us a fantastic show to cover and we cannot wait for the next one next week's going to be a fun one to watch Pocono Raceway for 80 laps could we see a first time winner this season or will we see another driver try to grab their multiple wins Seen a couple of those this season. Will we see another? Don't want to miss out. Again, tomorrow night, still on the table. We don't know if we are or are not. Keep your eyes out on social media if we're covering the BRB Cup Series. If not, we will see you Wednesday night. WSSR season finale, Kansas. Who's getting crowned the season eight champion? You don't want to miss it. That will be our next Freaky Fast broadcast.